the ideal of evil, more times than not when people discuss it, is to take a side. A person that's actually doing evil is not talking about evil. A person that's doing good is not talking about good. A, pie, a, bi, a pious person is going to say, I do good behaviors, and therefore you must do bad behaviors. Okay, so now we're talking about bad. You must change the word, my likes and dislikes. That's a personal preference, which that's all we ever have. The illusion is that I'm reading a book outside or I'm talking outside. No, my energy is probably shooting out there, but that energy I don't see. I can't see the, eff I probably can see some of the effects of when I speak, but I get it. For most people, when I swear, and I do it sometimes purposely, it reveals the person how they respond. Well, I don't like foul words. Oh, so you've already set yourself up. So then when somebody turns around and goes, I'm going to give you very calm meditation, maybe put some incense, you set yourself up. That means we can always be reprogrammed. You know, now, if you're trying to really understand evil, you better make sure that good's in the same room. But if you're only isolating evil so you can no longer, now you can get rid of it. That's like when people talk about getting rid of the ego. Then how would we talk? The ego's purpose is to function language. And most of us have to learn the language. I don't speak all the other different languages in the world. And if I did, I would have a different kind of gift. You know, it's not a, you, you have the ability to speak Spanish and probably even listen in Spanish and also probably maybe even read, read, read and write. Now, somebody else could turn around and say, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, it doesn't make you a lesser person because somebody else could turn around and say, I know how to cook food and I know exactly what, how it tastes in the food. Other people say, I know how to play instruments. Those are all different kinds of gifts you can call rewards. Is it evil to have a, to kill a person? Okay, let's, let's do the wise person. Is it evil to kill another human being? Well, how did he kill? Did he kill him with his bare hands? Well, yeah. Was it a fair fight? What do you mean? They both used their bare hands and they knew they were fighting to the death? Yes. So there's no evil action there. But if it's evil to kill a person with a gun, did he make the gun? Well, no. Oh, okay. So who's evil now? Is the person that made the gun that's evil? Is it the person that aggravated you that you feel as though it's your responsibility to put him to silence by killing him? Mm, that's why most people that join military or some tribal war are usually pretty asleep. But then they justify their actions by saying things like, well, those people are wrong, and therefore we must be right. I just don't say I'm right. I just say that they're wrong. You know, you can't have the conversation. I know you, we've had it. You really can't have the conversation of evil without having in the same room good and then realizing it's the same energy. It's coming from the same source. But to think that outside is evil, well, then I might as well turn around and say, well, damming a lake and then all of a sudden now it floods the city because it overflows it is evil. No, that's like the snake and the frog. Oh, no, trust me. Trust me. No, I'm a snake. I'm a water. I'm supposed to travel. Whoever told you to damn me? Ah, there's the question now. Evil is only one of the results. Same with good. It's just one of the results. But if you're trying to narrow it down, Jaro, I don't know where you got this energy from. I think you're really, I can be guessing, I'll I'm guessing here, because only you would know really what brings you value, and hopefully you have wisdom with it. What are you really chasing? contentment you want to be the richest person in the world you want to be the most famous person in the world you want to be the most evilest person in the world because there'll be a lot of people following those evil people a lot of people like Alice Crowley they like what he does because he's doing magic but they're not doing magic to help humanity they're doing magic just to get whatever they want out of it which is fine as long as he's honest with himself and he tells me the heads up, yeah, Dominic, I'm being very rationally selfish. Okay, no problem. So now I have a choice if I want to be here or not. Yes. It's usually the people that are clever. They say, well, I don't want to tell Jairo or anybody else. I'm trying to get the same job as him. So I'm going to tell him that's not the interview place. That that's being clever now. That's not being rationally selfish. You know, did you learn this topic? Because you... Obviously, that one lady, Dawn, was saying she comes from a Buddhist, even that, thinking you're a Buddhist. You're none of those things, but you could be all those things. If you're going to be a Buddhist, you might as well be a Christian. You might as well be a Jehovah Witness. You might as well be a, a Muslim. You might as well be a Sikh. You might as well be all those characters then. But I already know I can't speak all the different languages that are here in this realm. So then why would I want to be all the different religions, let alone all the science? Well, I'm going to stand still. I can only speak English. So any other language outside of that is wrong. 
That's me being clever at that point. But again, how many people after they know themselves or let alone even know themselves are honest with the self? I, I admire somebody that says, I'm a crooked person. I talk like a crook and act like a crook. So you're not a hypocrite. I'm an honest person. I do honest things. So you're not a hypocrite. It's the person that says he's crooked and then he's really nice to his mother. Now you're a hypocrite. Or he says, I'm very honest, but meanwhile, behind closed doors, I'm not paying my full amount of taxes because I don't agree with it. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with it. We have to follow the rules. Because if not, then we have to make different rules to keep guys like you in check. See, we all think we're clever. And most of us are. Because to say it, I'm smart would make I'm clever. Because a wise person does not talk about that kind of stuff. And how I know that is because I have moments of being wise. Moments. That's all it is, moments. That's why I don't, I don't bend a knee to anybody. And when I do, and I've done it before, it causes me more grief. Because something inside of me says, Dominic, you're dishonoring me. Not them, you're dishonoring me. When you pick up a gun or you try to hurt another person, you're dishonoring the human form. Live and let live is a tough one when you're eating animals. Pretty sure animals would turn around and say, well, if evil is based on morality, is that based on only on humans? What do you mean? Well, if it's only based on humans, then why don't you leave us animals alone? What do you mean? Well, if you don't care about us, Caring doesn't mean how you kill us. Care, not caring about us means that you leave us alone no matter what. But we like to have these conversations because that's, this is the product of generations of reading books. Pretty soon we're going to have generations of people, I got this on YouTube, so it must be the truth. It could be. But did you experience it? And I'm not talking physically. Did you experience it intuitively, insightful, empathic, clairvoyant? Well, Dominic, I don't believe in that kind of stuff, but you do believe in a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So you're going to defend those other things because you're a Buddhist now, or you're a Christian, or you're, you believe that in America, because you do send them to me, Jaro, that you think that for some reason or another, I give a flying, sorry, my language, give a damn about whether or not some puppet called a politician is representing us. They don't care about us. What they care about, and they do care, they care about the system that they have in they, that they have. They're not looking at me and Jaro and say, listen, the guy from Florida and the guy from Canada, you know, they're, they're really speaking out loud about how the Illuminati, they don't care about us. They care about the system that they're working for. The tennis company is not concerned about whether or not you modify that tennis racket. They care about keeping tennis alive so people will buy their stuff. They don't care about winning and losing because there's been many beyond Borgs. There've been many uh, Nadal. There's been many fetters. The, these guys come and go that, like water down a river. But what most people do, oh my goodness, Federer is such an amazing person. Not if I put a bullet to his head. I'm being, I'm being stupid now, but what happened if we put, you know, darts? We're allowed to throw darts at, at tennis players. Let's see how good they are hitting that shot when they have to worry about a dart coming to them. Well, that's not how you play the game. I said, who made the rules? Rules can be changed at any moment. But it's nice, like you, Jaro, when you get to play tennis, you're getting better at it, whatever that is. Or maybe you might just be rekindling when you used to play tennis when you were younger, where me and you can go play a bunch of 10-year-olds and they would destroy us. But that's just the way it is. But that's fun. So it is a game. It's when we are attached to the outcome, we have a problem. I have a bunch of buddies. Some of them, they play just to play the game and learn the game. Other guys play the game because they, they just want to win. They don't, they don't want to lose. They just want to win. So they're not going to learn how to get better at the game. They just want to win. Okay. I'm okay with that because I'm aware of that. But most people aren't okay with it because they're not aware of it. Well, then I, I got to be like them. No, you don't have to be like anybody. Could that be classified as evil? Maybe if we're basing it on morality, but then that would imply that any of us have a chance to be taught by our parents what morality is. And morality is not about right and wrong. Morality is just about morality. Would you do this to others if they did it to you? And I'm not talking about once. I'm talking about many times. Would you hit a person if he had the same opportunity to hit you? Well, yeah. If you hit him and you don't tell him, would you be okay if they hit you and they don't tell you? Well, yeah, so then you're true then. Forget about truth. You're true like a wheel. But most people would just say, no, I'd rather kill them before they kill me. Well, then they're not being 
honest with themselves. They're being clever. I didn't, swear, I didn't swear that much this time, Jaro, because I, I had to eat soap last week. Well, I did eat soap. <laughs> I got myself a lesson. Well, I, hey, I gotta, sometimes I got to do extremities for myself because I realized the fact that my wife came in and she told me that, the fact that I could do it, that means I'm consciously aware that I'm doing this. See, some people can honestly say, I don't know, I swear. No different. Some people don't realize when they're saying physical, they're unaware how they speak. And as they're saying the words, they're doing their mantra. They're saying it over and over again. It becomes a part of them. Good luck making them aware that, you know, you can change to different things if you want to. Yeah, but Dominic, everything's physical. Are you sure? What do you mean? Well, I've just given you a simple way to test it by saying, do you see the words that you're explaining? Well, no, but we've done this with science and all that. I said, you're again giving me a, a name. I'm not interested in science, religion, Gandhi, Buddha. What's the teachings? What are you learning from all of that? You know, if you learn from uh, from Yvonne Lendo how to play tennis, and then he said, Dominic, I'm really good. And all of a sudden, I'm going to play tennis with you. And you bring me Yvonne Lendo. I said, I want to see if you're good at tennis, Jaro. I don't want to play Yvonne Lendo. Because first of all, I would be a waste of his energy because I'm degrading the fact that I know he's a really good player and I'm not at that level. And if I was, I'm prepared to play to see what level we're at. I would not want to play with somebody that's way better than me, let alone way worse than me. I want to be somewhat in the balance part. But that's what's happening when I hear people talk about Gandhi. You're bringing in Yvonne Lindo. I don't want to hear about Yvonne Lindo. And there's a good chance when they do biographies on him, he's not the one that's writing it. It's somebody else using their imagination to fudge up some of it to make it very romantic. So when people talk about Buddhism or Buddha, they're romanticizing about how it was. Buddha had to live in a place where even in his kingdom that he lived in, it was mud. They didn't have a Timmy's at every corner. They didn't have a Starbucks at every corner. They didn't have a Home Depot at every corner. They didn't have a Winners or a Macy's. Even the kings that lived back in those days, they lived in, you know, big castles, but it was really cold. And how many people would take a chance of living with Buddha then or today where they're in heated rooms? Buddha would turn around and say, oh, so let me understand that. I had very few people really grasping what I was trying to learn. And now you have the internet and I'm going to have still this as many few people really grasping it. I rarely heard anybody today really talk about enlightenment stuff. They're trying to justify their interpretation of consciousness. I'm doing the same thing. Rarely do I find a gold nugget. That's why I had asked you, so what's the topic? Okay, evil. The fact that you didn't talk about good and evil, I'm like, okay, so we're going to split the egg. We're only going to talk about one side of the egg. Okay, what are we going to learn from that today? Because what, you're, what we're really doing is all what other people are doing. They're protecting the part that they like, and then they give everybody else the shit stuff. No, I said, I said, I should. No, that's just the word shit. That's not a bad word. <laughs> they never really a bad word. I just say it too much. But don't people do the same thing? I want to be happy. 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 To me, that's like saying shit over time all the time. It's like a parrot. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. Oh, I'm doing mantras. That's fine. It is. It's fine. But if somebody's going to be offended by me and Jaro, I don't. You, I know you don't swear, but if if not that much anyway. If people are going to be offended by me saying a couple of words, well, then how should I take it when somebody else is saying um all the time? Um. Well, because they understand. If they do understand or if they want to understand, there's frequency in um. There's also frequency in the word shit. Those are all energies. But unless they're going to teach that when we're really kids, that's why they had to teach and look for the Dalai Lama. And they had to teach him. They had a condition from birth. Whether or not he's an old soul, that's another thing, but you still got to condition them. You got to teach them the craft. So then you have to question whether or not how much is that his spirit or how much is that being altered? Because there's a good chance if me and you were raised at a very young age to learn things about being Gandhi or learning about science or playing music and all that, we might be a prodigy. You know, actually, that's the wrong word. We could be conditioned to emulate somebody that's born with that kind of, uh, that kind of gift. And even that, how would I understand them for me? How would I understand that for me? Because I'm thinking, this is all about me. 
you know, would it be evil from your perspective, Jaro, if you knew somebody who has a knife or a gun and they're trying to kill you, you would perceive that, yeah, that's evil. So would you fight evil with evil or would you try to flee so you wouldn't cause them to harm you and that would be harming them? Because now you could be dead, but now they have to live with that harm. That's the act of love. But it's hard to be unconditional when you're so caught up in your condition. Yeah, but I don't want to die. I said, then flee. Yeah, but he's going to do that to somebody else. That's going to happen with or without you. But people think for some reason if they go to the Tibetans, you're going to get all this information. You just have to stay in your own room. You're in a beautiful room now. You even have an exit sign. <laughs> I love it. Exit sign with a fire extinguisher. Are you working at, at an office now, uh, Jaro? At a company? Oh. Oh, it's it's an exit sign, but it's can you read the exit sign? Does it say exit or teak say? No, it's actually for me. I'm reading it. You must have the camera reversed. I'm actually seeing it as exit. Oh, I see it backwards. Yeah. So my right arm. Mm -hmm. but I see it like my left arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's good that it's getting corrected mm -hmm. from Thank mirror you. image to regular. Mm -hmm. And that is the exit sign to uh, allow people to get out of the office in case of a fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have to be shown, oh, this is the way that you can get out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, for example, Joe, we've done it a couple of times now, and I'm grateful that you decided to pay whatever and get it for a month. How many people would actually go to some sort of schooling system where you're going to sit for three or four hours and bang it back and forth. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm only going to bang it back and forth if I know there's some outcome. I'm going to get money for this. I'm going to get a mark for it, or I'm going to get enlightenment. We don't know what the outcome is going to be, but if you're already preconceiving what you think the outcome is, you're using your imagination. For me, you to go to Tibet and to sit there with a bunch of monks, I'm like, okay, so are we allowed to question each other? Well, no, then why am I here? Now, for them, they're going to turn around and say, well, Dominic, when I'm in an office in New York, I'm supposed to be a good, obedient soul. I said, and what do you think you're doing here now? What do you mean? They're in New York in the office. You got to wear ties, right? That's the requirement, the outfit. So here in, in Tibetan, aren't you wearing the same required tie? Yes. Aren't you doing the same thing when you're in the military? Yes. So that's their way of other people manipulating people saying, we know they're manipulated. Why? Because they're wearing the uniforms that we've given them. So now a person could say, but what happened if I want to go on my own? I said, that was the Buddha. That's what he was doing. He went on his own. He went to all these different groups, but he never became attached to them. Even uh, Helen Pavasky did the same ideal. But the way they changed the story, they made it look like, oh, but no, no, no. She joined the group. I said, any group that will ever accept you is a group that's not worthy to be with. I don't join groups. I will share in a group and I will hear them. But I'm not going to be a theosophist. I'm not going to be a Christian. I've already been converted a long time ago. I just made it a conscious effort. I'm no longer going to allow myself to be converted more than I already am. But I will study all these other things. Now, somebody could say, Dom, you're full of crap. I said, that's a given with me. I'm okay with that. So you don't have to tell me something I already know about myself. Now, the other person, if they can say that to themselves, well, then, Dominic, I know I'm full of crap. I said, well done because you're the only person that has to know that. But you can share out loud if you want, because I'll hear you. It doesn't mean I agree or disagree with you. I'll hear you. People think just because I agree, well, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to allow you to talk. No, you can do whatever you want. And you can say whatever you want. If I feel as though you're going to harm me, it's my responsibility to remove myself. Some people get offended the way I talk, so they're allowed to remove themselves. And if I'm there first, then the responsible is the responsible part is well, then I'll remove myself them. Now, if I got a way for, to remove myself, I said, okay, so I'm the one that's going to come with the knife. Are you going to tell me how I'm going to slit your throat? That's not my responsibility. I'll do whatever way is best for me because I know how the self works. Now, I'm not saying that's an extreme case, but that's not even an extreme case because there's people out there, Jaro, on a regular basis doing what they're doing and it harms humanity's growth. And even if they wanted to change, say, listen, I don't want you guys no longer to work for us. You know, good luck with that. You know, people talk about, you know, recently what Kanye West and all these other characters. Nobody gives a damn about what they're doing. And if they do, they only get caught up. Well, I, I want to say the word Kanye West, not because I really understand what he's talking about. 
let alone the system that we're on. That'd be like me complaining about uh, corporations, but meanwhile, I'm using one of their devices, which is called a computer. And then there's in between all the little subdirectories. I'm using a computer by Apple, and I'm using one of the apps by Zoom. And somebody else probably invented the camera part of it. Somebody did the audio part of it. And on top of that, for me to listen to all that stuff, somebody created the form that I'm in. I'm being disrespectful in that case. Now, if a person's smoking all the time to a point where they're harming themselves, are they not being evil to the self? No. We're playing with words, Jaro. That's all we're doing. We're playing with words, but in those words, there is sounds and frequency. That's why people that do chants, do mantras, if there was no value in repeating words over and over again, then we wouldn't say it. But because people don't realize, like Mike said it today, he didn't catch himself, well, physically. Okay, Mike, so you're not talking spiritual. You're talking physical. So you're trying to confirm only when it becomes physical. Oh, the scientist finally invented it. He didn't say the word scientist, but once you break it down to the molecule, I said, but you're ignoring the fact that you're using words to describe each phase. Science, molecules, microscope. Those are the, ch the chants we do. Now, you can manipulate somebody if you repeat it strong enough with a certain tonality three times. This is why when people chant, you have to chant a certain amount of time and they do the 108 and all that. There's a value to 108 because it's number nine. You know, that's where the moon, how far it is. That's how the sun is. You know, that's why the, with the, the beads or whatever, whether it's rosary or the ones the Buddhists, they're 108. There's a value for that. We say 360 because we've replaced the number nine. This is why Tesla said 369, not 360 because zero encompasses everything. Number nine is the back end. That's the spiritual meeting, the material. Now, I could be full of crap, Gyro. And I'm okay with that. But this shit that comes out of me, I'm the student. I'm hearing it. I don't expect Jaro to understand me. That's not your responsibility. But people will react to what I say. So that's revealing that they're living based on a reaction opposed to the ability to respond. Oh, Dom, why would you say that? Good question. Why? Because now we can do philosophy. Why? Because I don't understand you, Jaro, and I never will. So the only thing I could do is philosophy. Why do you say those things? People think philosophy is thinking about, well, you know, the trees are out there. I wonder who gave them to, who gave us the language to describe that thing called the tree, let alone redwood tree or sequoia tree. Most of them live longer than me and you will ever live. And even if that's under the premise that we come back a couple of times, you know, your mom's a hundred years old. She's been gifted, uh, well, not really gifted. Gifted would be past 120, but she's lived somewhat of a life and in some cultures, they would say, you must have done something that was healthy for you and your vessel that you lived up to 100 years, because most people are perishing at the age of 60 to 70 to 80 years. So she must have gave a lot of love to her kids. And the reward is, we'll give you longevity so you can explore and enjoy some of that time with them. And that's me guessing now, because somebody else can turn around and say, well, they're loving and they died at 40. I don't know their, their reason why they jump into the body. And I literally say they jump into the body because we're not in the womb. We're outside of the womb. So when people are talking to the womb, you're conditioning the womb. We jump in after. The spirit jumps in after. But hey, oh, but Dominic, no. So then, do you know anybody that experience of being in the womb? outside of the people that might be telling a story. And even if they were telling the truth, how would I understand that, let alone you, Jaro? Especially when you're honest with the self, say, I don't remember being in the womb, so I can't tell you for sure or not, but there's ways to double check to make sure that person's not full of crap. <laughs> you know, we're not really difficult creatures to really grasp when we, we understand the self, us, you know? If we really understand water, then you'll understand when it's in ice, when it's in a, a storm, or when it's in a river, or when it's mix, mixed in with salt, and now it's called the sea. We understand the flow of water. Now, if we're going to talk about evil, because most people only talk about immorality, if we're talking about evil, then is it evil for, if I need to drink water, but I'm only around a, 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 the ocean that only gives me salt water? Again, that's the ego talking. It's all about me. Poor me. You know? Mm -hmm. I killed another human being, but I can give you justification. You know, try to explain that to a grieving mother. Oh, so you killed my son. Yeah, but he's, he's a Taliban. Uh, like I said, you killed my son. What do you mean? Well, if your son got killed, how would you feel? Yeah, but he's American. No, 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 you're missing it. How do you feel? How do you feel that another human being happens to be my son just got killed, regardless of what he did or didn't do? 
You removed him. That was an evil act. Now, we can get into the equation. Well, then who built all these guns? The people that don't give a damn. And they're the ones that are actually aren't in those wars. Let them be the first ones. That's why in the old days, when the kings used to fight, they made promises to people that if we win the war, I'll give you some of the stuff. But when the king lost, he died on the, everybody fleed. Why? Because we're not going to get nothing. Why? Because he's the one that's going to endorse it. They killed the king. It's like killing a flag. Once you take over the flag, the game is over. And that's another form of evil. Now, it doesn't go by default because that's evil. Therefore, then I'm good. No, no, that's just being clever. Good and evil is the same thing. As you're doing some good act, you're also doing some evil act. You just don't see it. When I say you don't see it, when I'm talking about the spiritual, you don't see it as I'm describing the material. That's why they coexist. Now, if somebody says, well, but they're the same. I said, then you should be able to see the word that you're speaking. You say, the, you say the color black. Do you see it when you close your eyes? No. You might have some sort of symbols. You say, well, I see a, a, a boat. Do you see a boat? Or do you see another thing? Again, I'm using a word to describe the undescribable. I can call it an objective. Best way I can say it, Jaro, we're, we're, we're all in the crazy house. And whether we take our pills or not, we're in the crazy house. You know, people talk about free will. Oh, my God, there's free will. The will has many variations to it. And free could be one of them. But what I get the energy from most people when they talk about free will is not taking accountability for their own actions. Oh. Which is fine. You know, Jaro, I don't take accountability for my own food, me driving a car that somebody else built and fueling at somebody else's tank and then using somebody else's money to go to somebody else's grocery means I haven't done really much to participate in my own sustaining of myself. All of a sudden, they stop giving gas. I got to walk again. And that's a bonus for me. But for other people, oh, no, I don't want to walk in the snow. Yeah, why? Would you want to walk in the snow if you had to, you walk into a house that has no heater? So we are attached to our comforts. Buddha could only have wished for that kind of stuff that we have today. Good luck with all that disattachment. Because if he had a heated house in his castle and he had a whole bunch of people dying in front of him and all that, there's a good chance. I'm only guessing at this point. He might not have actually done the searching of attachments, but he, he was able to obtain as an observer. Is this it? I'm going to be a prince. And everybody's wor some people are worshiping me. And I know energetically, some of them don't even like me, but they're going to still pretend publicly that they like me. Oh. Of course, you're going to seek out better things. I did the same thing for myself. I can't speak on computer, but I've done something that what I described very similar. If that's all I'm going to do all the time, work to earn money. Now, I can use justification, but I need money. No, I don't need money. I might need what it can get me. Hmm. A lot of this is intellectual conversation. A lot of people that I've seen come onto your site to come here for intellectual stimulation. And when it gets a little bit, mm, they start saying humor or they figure, well, I got to go now. Where you got to go? That's so important that you really aren't into, you have an opportunity to actually have stimulation conversation beyond just intellect. You know, but anyway. But yet people would go to church or a synagogue, but if it went on for more than a couple hours or one hour, they'd probably say, oh, I don't want to come here again. But yet they'll sit there and watch sports because it's entertaining them. That's why I had told you before, Jara, we're all entertaining each other or amusing each other. I'm okay if it's, a, if it's somewhat fair where I know I'm being amused and I hope I'm amusing. Because if you're going to learn something, it's not from me you're going to learn it from. It, you're going to learn it from you, whatever that may be. You might one day wake up and say, fuck, is that all I've done my whole existence? I've done nothing more, go to work and work on programs and not even realize my own program I'm ignoring. You know, uh, can you unmute yourself, Gerald? Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. I still can't hear you, Gerald. Looks nice out there. Ah. 
Jaro, you're you're talking, but I can't hear you. Your mute might be still on. No, well, I'm hearing a big echo. Are you there? There you are. I can hear you now. <laughs> oh. oh, I know what happened. Oh, yeah. I forgot, I forgot to take my Bluetooth uh, headset. Now, there you go. When I go outside, I can hear you. And I can hear and, you. And you can hear me. Yes. Thank you, Jared. Oh, I have two. Uh, uh, what what did I get from today's session? Yeah, what did you get from my buddy? Uh, I have to uh, uh, try to uh, think about uh, why uh, there is evil in in, and yet evil is in a way good to have for balancing, and, and be, because uh, someone evil is another person's good because mm -hmm. the when when um, when a lion goes to uh, hunt down a uh, antelope and for the antelope the lion represents evil mm -hmm. and but for the lion the what it's doing is good so this evil is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. And and yet, uh, if if the lion didn't do that, then uh, the antelopes would would uh, overgraze and eat too much, and then they would uh, ruin the grassland. Uh, well. Uh, so maybe the the lion is 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 there to keep the population down. Mm -hmm. So even though it it even though we think of oh the, these people that are the elite uh, of elites that are powerful beyond our comprehension, they it seems like they might be uh, trying to kill us gradually through creating. Uh, this uh, COVID-19 and this vaccine, maybe the, the, even though it might seem evil, maybe they're doing something good to keep the population down. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, no, uh, Jaro, it's very purposeful. You know, nature has a very constructive and destructive ability to it. You're tapping onto it where you need to have, Hola. when you harness a whole bunch of people to live in a small community, such as let's say a bunch of animals, you're eventually gonna have to have that process of weaning out. Because we all live in civilized areas and we all choose to let somebody else feed us and do all our food, then you have to do the process of, you're gonna have to have depopulation. If everybody decided to scatter around everywhere and live throughout the plane of the earth, then you could say, okay, then why are you depopulating this area while we're cleaning it up for a new generation to come in? That's a different story. But most people that are talking about GMO depopulation, they're talking about, well, it serves a purpose, but I don't wanna be eliminated. I said, the honorable thing is, would you you'd be the first one to put up your hands? Why? Because if you truly value the concept that we have too many people that are, not growing their food. It's not because we're overpopulated. There's just not enough people that's growing all the food. And that's the problem. You know, when places like Walmart and all that, people complain about all oh, all the food they have to give away. Yeah, because the biggest problem is logistics. You got we got to ship it to your small little community. Why aren't you growing in the backyard your food? My parents mm. did that. Your mother probably did that. We're maybe not enough to sustain us, but that's where we're at. So for them to eliminate, the, actually they've been eliminating the population because we should be at 12 billion people. We're only at seven because that's why they had to introduce abortions, day after pill, uh, snipping your wiener and all that kind of stuff. Because humans have never worked collectively. We've worked very selfishly, but we've never worked collectively. Now, the closest thing I've ever seen that's really somewhat collective, if there's such thing as collective, is our selfishness. And our ignorance. Well, Dominic, it's somebody else's responsibility. <laughs> it's somebody else's responsibility to take care of me. It's somebody else's responsibility to do to the train. It's somebody else's responsibility to make the tennis racket. It's somebody else's responsibility to make the tennis courts. That's where we're at. 
So now when a person says to me, it's wrong, I already know I'm talking to a child because there is no wrong or right unless you're going to see all the positive and negative, meaning that what's going behind it, you know, is the de- is the devil in the detail? Is God in the detail? Most people don't want to get into the details. What they want is what they want, what they lack, but they're not chasing their needs anymore. That's why Rome collapsed. That's why England collapsed. And that's why America is going to collapse. Why? Because the only way those empires stay afloat is that they keep taking from everybody else. And the people that are in those, com- in those empires, they're so selfish, they don't even know that they're selfish. And then they go to other countries. Oh, my goodness. I'm so fortunate to live in America. No, because America takes from everywhere else. If Russia, China, all those other countries were able to do economically and we exchange and barter solely on our resources, we wouldn't have empires. It just wouldn't. Because the only way an empire survives is if it takes from everywhere else. And that's not the fault of the American citizens, but they're, they but they do receive the rewards from it so they are partly to to give a blame to if there's such thing as blaming anybody because blaming doesn't really give solutions that's just finger pointing Mm. but a lot of people like to finger point because they don't want to take accountability for their own action well dominic i don't agree with what the iraqians do over there with the oil and all that but you love driving their cars don't you Oh, I don't agree with Russia, what they're doing over Ukraine, but you love all the resources that Russia is now choosing to charge a little bit more. Of course you do. This is the hypocrisy of the human race. Now, people will hide and say, well, but it's religion's fault because it was their responsibility. It's state's responsibility. Now it's their fault. It's now it's science. You know, science was created because religious people, the Vatican said, you could do whatever you want to talk about out in space, but don't talk about anything on the ground. That's why science came to be. That's why NASA is pretending that they're up there. They could be up there, but what purpose does it serve? For the rest of humanity, it doesn't do nothing. And then people say, well, I go to a doctor. You know the best way to, to avoid being sick? Don't go in the hospitals. The best way to, to, to be a good abiding citizen, make sure you don't go into courts. The best way to not lose money at the casino, don't go to the casino. The best way to help the poor, don't become the poor. And when I say poor, I'm not talking financially. I'm talking about mentally. This is why when Manny was talking about, well, I go into meditation and I try not to think. I said, that's the biggest error you can make. Learn how to think. Well, I'm a simple guy. Really? Now you're just being clever. I'm a simple guy. We're all complicated, but yet we're all simple in a sense that none of us know how to create anything. Now, I could have that conversation, but I, I, I can almost assure you, oh, Adama, I don't want to talk to you because you're not feeding me what I really want to hear. Because I went to the certain Buddhist camp where they tell me what I want to hear. Make it feel good. Hey, wear this ashram. You can go there. You know, I don't have to go to Tokyo to understand how Tokyo lives. I don't have to go to Italy to understand how Italy lives because we're very similar no matter where we go. But usually when people go to these other countries, they, it reveals how naive they are. It's like when somebody says, oh, Canada is the best place to live. Have you been anywhere else? What do you mean? Have you been anywhere else in Canada? Forget about being in Italy or Spain. Have you been to Vancouver? Well, no. Have you been to Calgary? Well, no. Have you been to Florida? Well, no. Have you been to California? No. So then how can you say Canada and America is the best place to be living? That's an arrogant position to be in. It's like when somebody says, Catholics is the best way to be. Have you studied all the other teachings and religions? Have you, t- have you studied Buddhism? And not based on the way the people that represent it, because most of them are pretty funny looking. You know, you see a, you see a, a monk dressed in like a, like a little colorful boy playing for the Lakers. That's not representing Buddhism. Buddha would be like, uh, like Forrest Gump when he was running. He stopped running. Why, why, why are you guys all following me? I would I'd say the same thing to the monks. Why are you all following me? Yeah, but Buddha, you have so much to teach. Are you a buddhikata? What do you mean? Well, you want nirvana. Isn't that a selfish act to have nirvana? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I want to be able to live forever. I said, so then should Hitler live forever? Should Mussolini live forever? Should Alexander live forever? I'm not even going to give him the honor of calling him great. Should these guys live forever? Should Joan of Arc live forever? Well, no. I said, so then why would you think you should be any different? Ah, because you're still a boy and you got raised by your family. And you think, oh, I don't like to be that. You know, I want to make sure people publicly see me wearing them. No, take off those robes. Unless you want everybody else to wear the robes, then you're now, you, now you're not special again. 
Oh, but I want to be special. Look at me. I shave my head like I'm in the military and I wear these robes like I wear an army military for Russia and America. You haven't done nothing amazing yet, my friend. And even that, I, w I wish I can call you my enemy before I call you my friend, because at least you would challenge me. But you're not challenging yourself. So how can you challenge me when you don't even challenge yourself? Yeah, but and then you, then you start hearing the words, Jaro, I'm a Buddhist. I'm a monk. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Jehovah Witness. I'm a Jew. I'm a democracy. I'm communism. Do you see all the words that comes out? Never once saying, I don't need labels. It sounds like you need labels. So then why are you telling me something when you're trying to buy the same thing you're trying to sell? It's of no interest to me personally, but I'll hear them. No different. I hope that they hear me. That's all I could do. I could hope. And I even I don't even like the word hope, but I hope that they're at least hearing me. Why? So then down the road, when they're listening inside, say, you know something? Well, that guy thought he was saying something to you. I don't know if it's the truth, but he was saying something that was jargon in my head. Have you ever questioned yourself? Well, not really. So then why do you expect him to question you? How many people would stop being a monk or a priest or a politician if they're truly trying to help humanity when they find out trying to be in the classifications? Because remember, we live in a culture, Jaro, that they still have the Hindu way of doing the classifications. We just have it in a different way. Working class, educated class, rich class, the poor class. Once we keep on classifying ourselves, the demigods are laughing. They're not even close. They're going to spend so much time going to Tibet. They're going to do all of this. They're going to do all the little motions. They're going to go and they're going to say, oh, I'm going to climb the cliff and all that. I was just talking to a monk. Yeah, you were talking to a child. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say child, it's their emotion that makes them get to that point. Now, even if they become aware and say, Dom, then I've been living this erroneous way. I say, yes, and good luck trying to alter that and good luck trying to explain to other people that I've been fucking, I've been lying the whole time to myself. You're not going to change Buddhism. You're not going to change Christianity. You're not going to change uh, all the other isms in the world. It'll be no different when people talk about half glass, half full, half empty. Is the earth flat or is it globe? Those are both distractions because let's say they're both. How would I explain that to you, Jaro? Jaro, I've been on a plane. That won't give you the, I won't give you the description. You have to go in some astral plane or somebody saying, I, I meditated for so long that I can astral travel my body, that I could be in the presence of another human being in another part of the world. Oh, so you're talking Wi-Fi. Okay. Well, there's certain people in the world that play tennis really amazingly good and they practice for years. Me and Jaro practice for years and we still didn't get to their level. Everybody has different kinds of gifts curses, gifts, call it whatever you want. Just because one person can do it doesn't mean we all can do it. Just because a person can run under, under a mile in four minutes doesn't mean we all can do it. This is where people get misguided. You could talk about the Buddha. I could talk about some athlete. Doesn't mean that I'm doing it. This is where people get misled. Just because I, I rub shoulders with the Dalai Lama, that means I, I know anything about him. Now, he could turn around and say, well, Dominic, but I'm the Dalai Lama. I said, you know something? I'm going to find the weakest link in the people that follow you and I'll, and that will prove whether or not your system is valuable or not. Are you willing to do, are you willing to take that chance? Well, I don't want anybody to, val to follow me. I said, really? So why do you allow people to write books on you? You are receiving money from that, right? So you're taking advantage of people. Now he didn't create the system, so he can't turn around and say, well, I'm a bad person. No, no, you didn't create, but I'm not helping you be aware. You're participating in harming humanity. No different than me. I step over people's toes all the time. To a point where they say, well, Dominic, I'm, I'm, I've been enchanted. You're trying to dis disenchant me. I'm sorry. But you know something? As long as we live together in a civilized world, I'm allowed to say whatever the fuck I want to say. Same with you, Jaro. You could write a book. Doesn't mean everybody's going to read it. But let's say everybody read it. Doesn't mean they're going to understand it. The Bible is one of the most bought book because you got to pay money for those books. Not me and you, but they have to publish it. Doesn't mean it's the most read book. You might even say Shakespeare's read more than them. Doesn't mean they understood it. Big difference to know of something and to understand it are two different things. To a point, I even heard Manny say something to me about understanding. I said, you got caught up in all that crap. That's your emotions. Understand the tree of light. Understand what are you standing under? There is people that there's beings that rule over us. That's why it's understand. Now, they might be ruling over you. That's your own understanding. And wisdom is your own discernment. I've been sharing with you, Jaro, for the longest of time. Do you see the language you speak on the thing? When you had that moment of, oh, I've never heard that before. Huh. 
only way you're going to do that is like a mantra. You got to keep saying it over and over again. Oh, so I don't actually see tree. But I still do see what other people call a tree. Yes, I'm not here to denounce it. It's like when people say, well, you don't see tree. I said, are you talking about the physical or the language? Because I do see the object. No different. I see the grass. I see the fence. And I see the moon. But I realize all of those words I don't see with the senses. But I'm explaining it. Because how do I associate? How would I know your name is Gyro? You have to go by a name. But that's not who you are. You might respond based on sound. It's like when a dog hears a whistle. Some dogs, if not a lot of dogs, they can hear a certain tone. We can't hear it. Some people can. You might even be one of those people. Joe, you, you, you do uh, karaoke. I couldn't sing for my life to, depended on it, meaning that I couldn't sing it to a way where it would be harmony. Same with my voice now. I know I have a more of a squeaky voice, or you said earlier, I talk really fast because that's how my brain works. Now, other people could say, well, Dominic, but I can't keep up with you. I said, then go find somebody else then. Because it's not my responsibility to change the way I learn. It'd be like me being the fastest runner in the world and then slowly, purposely running slower so everybody else can keep up with me. That, that's a dishonor now. Let them catch up to you. If Freud was as smart as everybody says he was, then don't dumb it down. Make, make society catch up to him or her or it. Because if that was the case then, who would have invented cars if we even invent anything? We're looking at technology where I can see you, Jaro. Only thing I'm using is my senses, my couple senses, my hearing senses and my sight senses. But I can't taste you. I can't touch you. I'd be touching a computer, but I wouldn't be touching you. And I can't smell you. So to see the limitations, it reinforces one sense. But we have many senses beyond just the five senses. But again, that's me guessing at that point. Because... I'm guessing for others, even if I did know for sure for me, how many books would I have to write to convince people or to program people to forget about themselves and then believe in me? That's why I don't give a damn about who Gandhi was. But I do understand to a certain point, what was his purpose? And then I hear, well, Dom, there's a lot of things going behind the scenes. He was there to help things shift. He, he wasn't the sole reason why Gandhi, India was the way they were, one way or the other way. It's like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is this one person. He's not there to be the total destruction or the construction. Again, this is all on the premise of what some people might classify as evil. You know, is it you had you touched right on it, you know, with nature. You kind of touch with nature, you know. Animals have to be eliminated. Some animals get extinct to make room for another species, in this case, humans. I think we're the aliens here, personally, the way we, <laughs> the way we treat nature. Now, we might turn around and say, yeah, but I don't make all the water bottles, but you do use them. And there's more people that use them, that's more destructive than the few that are making it. So that's kind of like saying Hitler was wrong. I said, no, if he was wrong, then what about the other people that picked up a gun and killed another human being? And then are they more wronger? <laughs> they got to be accountable for their own actions. Yeah, but he did it. No, no, you got to be accountable. You got to go backwards now. What was, the, what was the last thing done? You shot him. So forget about where you got your commandments from. You took the accountability. And anybody that joins any military, there is a reward for it. No different if you're a farmer. There's a reward. It might not be advantageous, but it is a reward. Why? Because most people in a reward, they learn something from it. Most people, when they hear it's wrong, they try to avoid it now because they don't like the word wrong. So then treat it like it's a reward. What did you learn? You put your hands on the stove. What did you learn? I learned that I have emotions and I know how to express them. Well done. You learned something today. Are you going to do that again? I don't think so. I said, well, only time will tell. Why? Because two weeks from now, you're going to put your hands on some sort of ice and then freeze it. Three weeks from now, you're going to go on the beach. You're not going to put any lotion on your hand. You're going to burn your hand. So did you really learn about how to protect your hand? No. So you're still learning your mistake. Yeah, but those are all different. I said, but what's the common theme? You're not protecting your hand. And how many people could say that? Honestly, Jaro, if I was talking to Dalai Lama, I would be fucking giggling to a point. I would have to actually get a peg and peg him down to say, you're going to finally sit here and you're going to finally listen for the first time in your life that it's done inwards. Anybody that follows the Dalai Lama, whether he chooses to or not, is being misled. Same with me. I don't, I don't expect anybody to follow me, but that could be my arrogant ego talking. Because they're not 
people start following me, I might get caught up like a lot of human. Oh, it's nice. Wow, these people really worship me. Oh, wow, I got the best book ever sold. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm, you know, I'm like a little schoolgirl. It's not really fair to say schoolgirl. I'm, I'm like, it's like my, the other day I was telling my friend, I said, you and your mom are very common. What do you mean? Well, she gets all caught up in, in soap operas. Don't you get caught up when you watch your team win or lose in hockey? He goes, well, yeah. I said, you're no different than your mother. You're caught up in your emotions, which is fine. But never say to somebody else that, oh, they just watch soap operas. Well, they can say the same thing about you watching sports. <laughs> it just, it's just an awareness, Jaro, and I'm sharing out loud. I see all our hypocrisy. No, I don't see all our hypocrisy. I see some of our hypocrisies in the fact that we can condemn somebody else but not seeing, well, wait a second here. Haven't you done your own sin before? Haven't you misled yourself before? Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Well, haven't you gone to McDonald's? Does McDonald's talk about it's the healthiest food on the planet or the most served? You know, people play tennis. Me and you, I, I haven't played in years, but you play tennis. There's a chance you could hurt yourself playing tennis, but that's a chance you're willing to take because you enjoy playing tennis. You might enjoy getting better at tennis. You might enjoy winning at tennis. Some people solely play sports so they can win. If they lose enough, they'll stop playing the sport. So they're not there to learn. They're there to win. They're, they're, they're after one outcome. So it's the same with a lot of things. People go to school so they can get a high paying job. They don't go to school because once I'm done school, I'm, ne I'm never going to have to learn again. I, I used to think that way. And then I started reading for a while. Then I got, nah, I've done enough reading. I'm going to start, you know, listening to this other because I've always liked, liked things on my ears. So I hear things, not, not to say one's better than the other, but at least I should become aware. What is the process when I hear things opposed to reading things? And I came to my awareness. For you, Dominic, it, it, it harms you more than it's good. Oh, okay. So when people try to give me written information, I usually fall asleep. If they give it to me in, a, in, a, in an audio thing, I will, I will hear it out because I know even if I tune it out, I'm something still hearing all of that. When I close a book, I can't read it unless I put it under my head. But for some people, Jaro, maybe you're an exception to the rule. I can't say you're the exception. Maybe you enjoy it. You like to consume information through a written form. This is why when I hear people talk about, well, most people are just consumers. They just consume all these products. We consume in so many other areas, not just food and buying iPhones and all that. We consume in information. That's when people start getting into this separation classifications of saying, well, then that's evil. How? And then once you start really listening to a person inwards, you realize, they're playing a game with themselves. They're not really after evil. They're trying to justify why they think it's good or why they feel it's good. Because it's not always about thinking, Jaro. It's about feeling. People will meditate for hours on end because they learn to postures because it makes them feel good. But Dom, I don't think when I'm actually meditating, I say, yeah, because you're too busy feeling. Yeah, but it's good to feel. Well, I guess it's good to think too. Yeah, but I don't like to think. Ah, oh, so now we're talking about your likes and dislikes. Hmm. Hmm. It's all possibilities, Jaro. I'm yapping, Jaro. That's all I usually do. This, this this week, at least I'm not swearing as much. <laughs> huh. So you, you allow me to yap. I, I appreciate that, Jaro. Whether it makes sense to you, the most important person that has to make sense is me, mm -hmm. you know? And if I can emulate that, maybe one day I've said to you numerous times, I don't think it'll ever happen in the near future where I'll go into a state of silence. You know, I, I do go into a state of silence when I listen to hours on end, other people talking. So it's not because oh, I'm not doing the work for myself. Mm -hmm. you know, when people say, Dom, I, I can't possibly listen to you for three hours. I said, yeah, you're just revealing you probably couldn't listen to somebody else unless he's famous. Oh my goodness, I just listened to Jordan Peterson for three hours. Did you understand what he was talking about? What do you mean? Because if you understood what he was talking about, you'd realize he's even losing himself in that conversation. But because you like names, you know, Hitler's famous. Why? Because we keep talking about him. Buddha's famous. Why? Because we keep talking about the name. Well, what is this teaching? Well, I don't want to talk about what Hitler did. Yeah, because you don't want to talk about what Buddha did. <laughs> How many monks would actually give up their robe and leave behind following Buddhism or all that 
then and if they say why, why would i do that i said now <laughs> now you're being a clever game now you're, you're following a guy that gave up his riches his attachments to pursue something in, in the unknown but yet you're no different than how he was before he did all of that could the dalai lama give up everything that everybody accolades on him he might but what about the energy when people talk about him say, oh no i'm full of crap there's been some philosophers some mystics that basically says anybody that follows me is full of crap and everything i say is full of crap well you can't say those things we're trying to avoid saying those negative words i'm the one that's saying it are you gonna you know i've had this with my, my some of my buddies i said so let me understand this i'm gonna say things about myself who's gonna defend me now when i'm ripping into myself well i will i said i don't want you to defend me i want you just to hear me and i usually i use that word quite clearly gerald i don't want people to listen to me I want them just to hear me. Listening is done within. Wow. And once you start listening within, you might hear some sad stories. Like, what the fuck, Jarl? We treat ourselves like shit. We're full of shit. I've been here the whole time. I know what you do when you're in the dark. Okay, so who are you fooling here? You're not fooling Dominic. You're not fooling your mother. You're fooling you. Yeah, but that's going to be a struggle. Well, that'll be no different than a guy that's trying to quit alcohol and realizing my problem is actually not alcohol. My problem is emotions. But because they put chemicals in the alcohol, that's another problem. But before, alcohol in its purest form, you would have to have emotional problems to, to, to keep going to the same well. Same with smoking. It's, that's an emotion. It's a grieving emotion, but it's emotion nevertheless. Or drinking is an, an angry emotion. People that do hemp, nothing wrong with hemp, but they're trying to escape. And how many people that go to these monasteries, they go to these convents, oh, I feel good. Oh, you're really attached to your emotions, aren't you? Hmm. Oh, it was amazing, Dom. I went here and I, I, I sat there for five hours and I meditated and I was just in bliss. I said, what do you do when you sleep for fucking eight hours? Well, I'm in bliss. It's the same ideal. So you haven't really done nothing amazing. Yeah, but I, I sat in this posture. You should have seen it. I had my foot double folded and all that. And then, of course, I had a little pain in my hip. Oh, that's where your emotions stored. Oh, I see. So did you do a silent retreat while you're there, too? Well, yeah. Did you laugh at anybody making jokes? Well, yeah. So did you really break your silent retreat? Well, that's different. I said, oh, everything's different now. Oh, but Jaro, you should have seen it. I went to Peru. I did ayahuasca. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, and I sat there. The Dalai Lama was looking right at me. Oh, my goodness. One of the monks were looking right at me. Oh, my, it was amazing. Oh, he was such an amazing guy. Oh, my God. Really? Is that the purpose why you came here on earth? There's already enough people that worship each other. Is that why you came? Oh, my goodness. Michael Jordan, he, he robbed me. You should have seen it. Because Michael Jordan is the guy that invented basketball. He invented the court. He invented the name. He invented his opponent. He's so amazing. Oh, we have special guests. Who? Mike in Panama City, Florida. Bring him in. Bring him in. He's on the beach. Is he on the beach? I hope so. Mike gives Where? us some nice sceneries. Oh, he was in the waiting room. Bring him in. Where is he? Oh, I have to let him in. Let him in. <laughs> oh, there's two people. Let him in, Mike. Jar Jar you're, 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 you're avoiding people to get in. Get him in. Oh, there's Mike. Yeah, sweet. Hey, Mike. Mike? Hey, what's up, guys? I, I've been doing stuff all morning. You guys uh, having a good discussion? We're yapping. Yes. Mike. We're yapping. <laughs> we, we're studying evil. Oh. And Dominic and I have come to the realization that evil is necessary for balance. For example, look at nature, the lion taking down his prey for the, his benefit. So it sees that as good, but his prey sees that as evil. And yet both must coexist because if you remove the lion, the prey, the antelope will 
overpopulate and overgraze and destroy the habitat for their kind of species and maybe others. And then they will turn into a desert. Maybe that's <laughs> how the Sahara Desert came about because the Romans took the lions to the Colosseums that turned us the grazed grasslands into a Sahara desert. Well, I'm like over exaggerating, but you get the idea. Well, Joe, in that sense, if, all, if the animals didn't do this continuous cycle, you would have either for a couple of generations, way too many deers or too many animals grazing on the grass. And then it would be that Sahara, that, that desert. You know, the concept of biblical story, good and evil has to they coexist. Now, if that's a punishment, so be it, but it coexists. Again, that's a perception from our view. Uh, I can only talk from my view personally, but from my view. Then we start giving meaning to it. We have definitions. So nature does have a, a tendency of being very wild and untamed. So you do need the concept of constructive and destructive. So that animal that's eating another animal, that could be very purposeful. As the observer, we might think that is good or bad or good and evil in this particular case. Where, but they do need to coexist. Is when we have too many humans, then we have we start having too much of an extinction going on. The fact that we colonize into major cities, at least we're giving nature a better chance because at least we're not, you know, everywhere on nature. So certain parts of nature on the earth can at least we, you know, rehabit itself with nature, such as trees, the earth itself. The desert even serves a purpose. And I'm, but again, it's our perception of what we perceive things as evil. And a lot of times it's because, like I said earlier, Mike, you weren't here, it's because we're actually protecting our erroneous views of even what we think good is. What? How are you, Mike? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm out uh, doing some land clearing today. Oh, to, oh, trying to you're uh, gonna turn turn it into a Sahara desert. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of all the weeds and put something that's maybe more worthy of the space. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, you're that, gardening. That's, yeah. And that's our perception, Mike. You know what I mean? Like we favor certain things where other parts of nature weeds serve a purpose too, because they attract certain kinds of insects, certain kinds oh. of flies. You know, it's, but I guess for us, we get caught up in the cosmetic part. And that's an honest statement. I'm not saying it's right or wrong what you're doing. It's just, that's, that's your preference. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, we could, uh, I don't know, like, with some of these reflections, um, I believe in uh, what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, I, you know, we have, uh, to challenge us with balances, you know, to, uh, to, um, you know, work the earth mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, subdue it to, uh, serve us. And of course, uh, you know, probably, uh, prior to the fall, we probably had a better idea of exactly how to do that. And we had fewer things at play mm -hmm. that, um, that would cause, uh, problems and imbalance, but, um, you know, to, to some degree, I mean, I guess, uh, I'm just thinking that, you know, I mean, you know, we're the higher thinkers, you know, it's good that we're challenged with certain things, but it shouldn't paralyze us sure. and cause us to be, you know, uh, completely, uh, you know, I mean, there's to an extreme, there's some people that think that the world would be better off if mankind were to become extinct, right? We wouldn't be there but, to uh, confirm that. We wouldn't be there to confirm that one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and nobody would be there to think about it, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, like prior to the fall, there was a garden east of Eden. They never gave the name of it. And really, there was, the fall was actually part of you had to reproduce. Even the serpent itself has to reproduce. So it's some sort of reproducing species. And it did say to Eve, if you're going to follow the scriptures of it, did God say so? That was the question. This is where Jesus says, you yes, you, let your yes be yes and your no's be no, because God wasn't speaking to Adam. That was the Lord God speaking to him. That was the one that created in his image. We were formed in, in the Lord God's image. We weren't, we weren't created. We were formed. And even that, are we a mistake? 
I'm going to pose it as a possibility of mistake because if you're in the garden and you're tending to it, were you supposed to have offsprings? Well, no. So then why was the ground cursed? Because Adam, because of you, because you, you were formed from the ground. Why was the tree of knowledge good and evil bad? Because on the sixth day, the creatures that were formed, they rebelled. So on the seventh day, when all the gods are rested and they're still are resting, they basically said, okay, no problem. Do whatever you want to do. But you're, you're earth beings now opposed to being spiritual beings only, which is fine. You know, most of us, whether we know it or not, we jump into the form. We're not actually in the room. But hey, that's me posing possibilities for myself. And sometimes when I pose it, and it might even sound like so I'm talking, it's, it's the truth. It challenges me opposed to other people. So let, me, yeah, go ahead. let me capture what you said a little bit. So you're differentiating between Lord God and, God. and Creator God? Yep. In, uh, in the sense that... Lord God meaning Jesus, Lord um, God meaning the Father. Lord God never, suppose we never had a name, could have many names, but I'm going with that premise that on the sixth day, let's create him in our image and let's create them males and females. They were created. Now, the other story, they try to think it's a, a caption where there's a garden east of Eden and something was formed and put in that garden and said, do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You can eat of the tree of life, of wisdom and understanding, but you can't eat of that knowledge of un spiritual and material. So now the serpent, when it came to Eve, said quite clearly, did God say so? That was the clever. She could either say yes or no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it's either yes or no. Did God speak to Adam? No, he didn't. That's my view on it. Now, people can read it whatever way they want, because remember, we're, we're talking about written information. If it was inspired but, um, to be, go ahead. Well, let me ask you this if uh if that incident mm -hmm. was considered a fall mm -hmm. did the fall come by violation of something other than did not uh disobeying god um i'm leaning we were disobedient to the lord god the father okay we but to um but if but if the lord god never said it then no, where no. does the disobedience come from no i'm saying I'm saying when the serpent that actually was able to reproduce said to Eve, did God say so? First of all, it didn't talk to, uh, to Eve, unless you want to talk about it in the womb. Didn't talk. It was talked to Adam. So right. now the whole idea of the apple was misleading because even that they sold fig leaves on them. I would lean more towards fig trees. But anyway, people are going to make stories up. But if you're following the story, take it for what it is. You go inwards and like, okay, so why are they saying ruler gods? That's why on here we have rulers. We don't have owners because the gods chose to rest on the seventh day. We're not talking about man-made seventh day. We're talking about energetically different plane seventh day. So when the serpent said, did God say so? Now, the serpent could have been the, the bride of the Lord God. Lord God says, don't be disobedient. Why? Because other beings that were created on the sixth day were disobedient to the gods. This is where they talk about Anki and all these other characters. But once again, even if that's all a story, what was the name of the garden east of Eden? They never gave the name. And when the, the, two, the twin boys... Uh, Cain and Abel, and one brought the, from the products from animals, and the other one brought the stuff from the ground. The reason why he, he couldn't bless Cain is because the ground was cursed because of him, because he was disobedient. And now, because you're disobedient, you're going to experience the spiritual material. You're going to have immortality. You're going to have mortality now, where you could have easily kept on eating and, and be obedient. And most of us were disobedient. We want to seek knowledge. And most of us might not go after knowledge as much as go after dogmas, belief systems, but that's a story. But they're all stories. So when I say, in my view, Mike, that's all it is. It's my view. That's all it is. I'm not going to write. I'm not going to make a religion out of it. I'm not going to write books on it. Those are just my views on it. When I read it for myself inwards, it's like, oh, so there's a Lord God and there's gods. Yes, there's many gods and there's many Lord gods. So Krishna is a demigod, a Lord God. Allah is a Lord God. These are all demigods. They have to be obedient. If not, they're disobedient. They're trying to manipulate. They, there's, there's Lord gods that run everything. They run the trees, the sequoia trees, the waters, and all that kind of stuff. It's not like man-made, where most of us don't even know where our technology comes from. So but that's my choice. That's my view, and that's I'm okay with it. Go ahead, Mike. So where, where, what is the foundation of your beliefs? You're talking about belief system. I'm actually coming down just to knowledge. I'm talking about wisdom and understanding. But if you want to go belief systems, a belief system is somebody writes a book and they tell you something. Somebody tells you you went to the moon. The only way you can know for sure is if you went to yourself. Doesn't mean you're going to have wisdom and understanding how we got that technology. 
So you you have a belief system that we went to the moon. Do you know for sure that, we, that you went to the moon or let alone they? You have to believe it. That's a story. That's what I'm saying. It's just a story. So uh, everything's a story. Not quite completely understanding the, the, mm -hmm. the you're saying that the, your dogma is your is your ultimate truth. Is that what you're no, saying? no, all dogmas are belief system, whether it's science, state, religion, those are stories that we give each other. Now, you can know for sure for yourself, you can go out and say, okay, I know now how number nine works and doesn't work. It's like, I know that how a car supposedly works doesn't mean I have wisdom and say, well, I really don't understand how the moon and the sun correlate with the engine of a negative and positive battery. That's where discernment comes in. You'll start realizing the reason why Adam was able to name things is because the language itself is not attached to the material. That's why we have the word, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the awareness of spiritual material. That's all that means. We live in an evil world. We live in a material world. It's our likes and dislikes that we get caught up in by thinking, well, the word evil must be bad then. I'm like, no, it's just a word. And the language that they used to use before wasn't the language we use today. So there are there any universal truths that you subscribe to that survive all that scrutiny? I don't know about universal truth as much as I'm trying to be honest with myself. Now I could be full oh, of I'm crap, Mike. I could be full of crap, but that's I'm always the constant seeker. Is that how does that differ from like maybe the idea of just embracing chaos? Order and chaos have to coexist. The thing is with chaos, chaos is actually in the unknown and it manifests itself in what we call order in the material. Like our molecules are all chaotic. It just, from the senses, it looks are like they? it's very orderly. That's my perception of it, Mike. I, I couldn't prove it to you, Mike. I couldn't, you know, it will be no different me telling you where does language exist, the alchemy of language. We, we were fed the concept of cause and effect, but my observation from within is we're in the effect and side effect realm. The cause, I don't know where language comes from. And when I say language, numbers, colors, I don't know where it comes from. Just because I look at an object and I call it black doesn't mean that's where the language exists. So and I guess what you're saying is, is you're, you're tossing up a variety of possibilities. questions mm -hmm. so as not to... Uh, maybe ground yourself on something that could be proven false or might not survive scrutiny but, so but yet, uh, you're hesitant to present anything as you know uh, foundationally true that's picking a side and for me possibilities i know there's outcomes so i'm still caught up in my own dogmas so it's not as though I'm saying I've got rid of it. I'm just aware of how I'm attached to some of them and how I resist others. Now, it is a clever game that I play with myself. Now, other people might say, well, I don't play a clever game. I said, well, that's the irony. You, you, just because you say you're not playing a clever game, no different than me saying I am playing a clever game. So in this case, I could pin myself down and say, okay, I'm going to follow Christianity, Hinduism, uh, one of the many isms and all that. But I'm like, okay, but if I pick a side, then I cannot be flexible enough. Now, but don't you have to stand for something? Under me. I, I stand for me. I understand something. But even that, I don't, the ego does not run everything in my body. And even that, who's the one that's speaking right now? Because really, the, the, for me, when I'm awake and when I'm asleep, something else is functioning in my body. Fa long fast is, confirms that for me. Now, so is that an appeal for truth to inhabit you? Because you don't have the ability to derive it on your on, under your own intellect or well in that case mike i question everything so therefore if there was such thing as truth i'd be questioning it just as much as i'm questioning everything else i'm questioning my own feelings my own thinking my own reason it's not my responsibility to question others so other so, people so might, what would be the benefit of operating under those rules I'm a seeker for myself. I don't know if there's an end goal to anything for me mike i really don't i've done the on the work all the time i'm like is this it I'm chasing fiat currency. I, got, I, I can get excitement in anything. I get it. Uh, we, we've given up certain certain responsibilities of fulfilling our own needs. Now you're doing something. What? You're work, you're work, what? What's the difference between a seeker and a rejector? Because to me, mm -hmm. I, you, I, I feel like you'd like to credit yourself with seeking, but I, I feel like there's a lot of, there's mm -hmm. no, there's no adherence to anything. Okay, so, so in that it's case, really more of being a rejector, isn't it? Well, in, this, in that case, your statement right now is actually from a rejector point of view. 
So I, I can't work around that. A seeker, I'm not looking to reject anything. I'm, I'm willing to take in all kinds of dogmas. I just don't feel as though I need to convert to one of them. It's like you're not voting, but you want to understand the political system. Because you didn't vote, you don't have to do defense and attack. You can just take it for what it is. But if you feel as though you get more value by voting, then what's going to end up happening? You're going to defend one and attack another. So for me to join any sort of religion or state or science, I, I know I would have to step off what they call it, the fence, and to pick it, which is fine. But I like the possibility. One plus one equals two. The outcome is two. But I like many possibilities to get to it. 100 minus 98, okay. two times one. Those are my views, Mike. I, I'm not here to represent any any sort of teachings. But Can you it, still credit yourself with being a seeker if going in you know that your intention is to reject? Um, I'm, I'm saying a seeker because I'm more of a mystic, but I'm being clever when I say the word seeking. So I would be clever by saying I'm a rejecter too. I'm okay with that, Mike. I'm okay with my hypocrisy. And, and I'm not I'm not picking on you. I'm just no, you're being objective to. as well. Yeah, no, no, Mike, yeah. I, I appreciate when you do it because I'm always the student. Rarely do people actually call me out on my own because I do that quite well on my own. But I'm going to be blinded, not with my far sighted, and my near sighted, those sides on either side. And you, you're giving me an opportunity to say, okay, so I say the word seeking. Now you brought in another word, rejecter. Do I reject certain things? Yes, I do. I resist. That's part of suffering. Resistance to pain, let alone attachments to my comforts and pleasures. How many Christians could actually be at the footstool of Jesus and say, with well, all honesty, I'll give up all. No, you're attached to way too many things. Move along, young man. You're right there with the Buddhism. Could you walk away from Christianity? A lot of people would have a difficult time with that, Mike, because we're caught up in our comforts. You know, so, wearing a cross does not make a person a Christian. Going to church does not make them a Christian. No different than Jehovah Witness or a seven-day event or a Mormon. But you know something? It's an individual journey. When did we ever think this was about knowing others? It's about knowing oneself, being honest with absolutely. self, you know, challenging the self. None of this self-awareness is aware of the self. And the self, to me, I'm just laying it down to what our forefathers gave us this words to like little red breadcrumbs. Eagle, the I, the I am. Those are the programs that we have running. There's another program when you fast long enough to realize, well, there's something else running my body. Yes, that's another program. But who am I then? You're not those things. But you would have to get to that awareness and say, okay, well, then why am I joining a religion? Uh, because uh, we're all programming condition in some way. Why do I chase money? You know, why there's am I working? There's a Canadian yeah. who I really appreciate. His name is Bruxy Cavey. I've never heard of him. He's, okay. uh, and uh, he makes the argument that Jesus came to do away with religion. And I subscribe to that. <laughs> but it's I a tough religion, one. <laughs> I find religious religion to be a, a, uh, a man honoring tradition instead of a God honoring tradition. And it's There's not that it's intentional. It's just that I also believe that there is an enemy of God who would like to separate us from God. Oh, could be. And, and, um, and, and so um, the trap that a Christian would fall into is to become defenses of other religion, mm -hmm. which was never meant to be defended mm -hmm. uh, because God is above all that. It and could we saw be. That. Mm -hmm. Huh? No, it could be. And once again, I would lean more towards religious. So people could be very religious with science, very religious with state. You know, they become very religious. They, they, they settle more for settling for who I vote for opposed to who, what do they stand for? Or, you know, science, Did, what value would it be if we went to the moon or we didn't go to the moon? Or what value would it be for a Hebrew to be on a crying wall? What value does it bring to each individual person? You know, so now God, like anything else, I'm only going to speculate at this point, where if God is high and mighty, we're, we're there to strive to meet him, not him to come down to us. But unfortunately, we choose to say, well, you know, Freud was so intelligent, but let's dumb it down so we can all get grab it. No, it should be the other way around. We got devices on this plane of Earth now that's beyond the, co this, the ability for humanity to really grasp how energy really works with the cell phone. We could probably know how to use it, might be dissected to a certain point, but we didn't invent it. So now to think that for some reason, some Lord out there, Lord God, not Lord, Adam became the Lord, some Lord God out there saying, well, you know something, Mike, Dominic, I'm not really concerned about you guys. Why? Because I got to make sure I keep the boundaries of nature in check. I got to make sure that the, lo the light, the air, the wind, the space are controlling that, make sure water doesn't go over top of the, the lakes, I mean, over the over top of the land. And when it does, it's because you humans are doing something, again, destructive. You're so caught up in chasing your damn religions and state stuff that you 
you're missing it. It's within yourself. And I say this quite openly, Mike, our parents never taught us how to breathe. No, none of them have. We've never even done that. So that consciousness that our God floats in, then he's our teacher or it's our teacher from within. But our teacher's not outside. We chase too many things outside. But when it clearly shows me, you, Mike and Jaro, we've never been outside of that vessel. So God's already giving us our temple which is our vessel. But when we go around invading other people by going into wars and all that kind of stuff, it's just showing our hypocrisy. Now, let's hope that the gods decide or the Lord God say, listen, we'll do a reboot process. What do you mean? You're an immortal being. You can keep going back and forth into it. Well, I don't believe in all that kind of stuff. Oh, so then why didn't you come out as a one time only become a trillionaire? You know, we put too much emphasis, not maybe you and me, Mike, but people do put an emphasis that we got to blame somebody. It's the devil's responsibility. But wait a second here. The devil did go to Jesus and said, listen, just give me a knee. What do you mean? I did the same thing to Job. I got permission to say, listen, you put a hedge around that guy. Of course, he's not going to condemn God. But they're not people go around saying that they're Christians and they say the word damning God, let alone an atheist saying that. I said, if you don't value a concept of a God, those words should never come out of your mouth. Good or bad. So is, is that perspective, uh, like I feel like those reflections, no, here's the good thing. You know, in, in the Christian faith, to consider yourself nothing puts you in an advantage. And I feel like you express that in some manner. So there's a humility to all the difficult things that you might present. And that makes it, um, you know, worthy of conversation and, um, and exploration, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that the, the constraints that you're placing on God aren't consistent with the infinite God. I'm guessing you know, at that point, Mike. Mike, I'm guessing at that point. Mike, I'm I'm solely guessing at that point. I would never say to somebody else, God bless you. May God bless you. I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of, of some entities or many entities. You know, when I hear people talk about self-awareness, self-love, I know that I'm talking to somebody who's leading with their pride. It's usually when you're aware of the self, knowing the self, questioning the self. You don't question others. You question yourself. I'm not here to question religion. I already know religion has a lot of premises of men's input into it. And I know me, given the opportunity of putting in those positions, I would be no different. I might even be more hideous. You know, well, so let me this, ask you this. Yes. Um, do you exist for a purpose? Oh, no. Huh? But I can, based on my patterns, it might look like, okay, I wake up every morning, I go eat, I take a shit. I see the repetitiveness in things. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I do see the repetitiveness in it. And when I fast long enough, I don't have to shit for a while. I don't have to actually have body odor. I'm willing to experiment in those things. Not because there's, I'm going to write a book on it. That's usually the pride, the ego getting in the way. I'm going to speak on behalf of God. Well, that's nice. Tell me how that works out. What language are you going to use? Why? Because there's thousands of languages out there. So is Christianity supposed to be spoken in the English language, the French language, the Latin language? That's that's the hypocrisy of humanity. It's just a lot of people aren't aware of it. They're too busy. So is, is your highest calling to not be a hypocrite? No. No. I, I'm, I'm okay with being a hypocrite. I just have to be aware of it. You know? If I'm a crook and I talk like a crook and I act like a crook, I'm not being a hypocrite. No different a person that's honest. A person that says they're honest behind closed doors, they're actually cheating the tax man. I said, regardless if you agree with the system, you're being a hypocrite. See, people to put too much value on good or evil when they're to join together, to coexist. You need to have crime so you can show other people showing kindness to each other. We, you know, there's a bunch of people in the world that are poor. There's a bunch of people that are filthy rich. There's people out there that, like you right now, you're working with the earth. You're grounding yourself. You're working with nature. There's other people out there that are probably moving the earth so they can plant some major high-rise building on top of it. That's their choice. But there is rewards, not consequences. There's rewards to your action. So, so me, what, um, what, is, what is the rationale behind your concern for those points of view well i'm here to experience certain things my guy you know I'm, I'm not gifted in some ways where music comes easy to me or it comes to more, i have that year i'm good with food and all that kind of stuff i just have that ability i can take information i can juggle more than just two or three different ideals at once and not try to favor one or the other and when i do i see the limitation in myself so that would would you classify that as a, a form of giftedness it could be a curse too <laughs> or, or or a particular yeah uh uh but you have that uniqueness to you 
Um, no. I, I don't know if it's unique, Mike. Um, I've heard other people, you know, I, I don't think I get caught up when people give name classification. Oh, Socrates, Jesus. No, they're no longer here. And if they are here, they're probably not here in the physical, but it's the teaching that brings value. The teaching comes in the form of a word. That's the teaching because there's sounds and frequency. The reason why I'm trying to classify it a little bit is because you recognized that uniqueness about yourself as you've, you know, interacted with others and maybe seen where they're, uh, let's just say with the word gifted in different ways, right? I mean, would yeah. you agree that that's evident in your experience? Yep. We all have so, gifts. Yep, we all have gifts. Is there a purpose to your giftedness? Oh, I wish I knew that, uh, Mike, but then even that, I think that could be my ego talk. And when I say ego, I could be my limitations in that case. You know, like for so, me to let's just assume that there is a creator. Yes. And uh and, and, I'm, uh, I'm for that. and I'm you for have that. and you have unique giftedness. Mm -hmm. given to me. Um would would your suppression of that giftedness be your highest calling, or would your highest calling be an expression of that for a, a maybe a, a purpose which honors your creator? Um, for me, Mike, I've heard myself many times say out loud, whether people grasp it or not, as long as I grasp it, I share information with people. I'm not interested in getting caught up in debates, because to me, it's a perception that we all have senses, but I don't see when I call the sun through your eyes, so I can only share. I get it that I'm already around a whole bunch of people that want to play this conclusion game, like they treat it like a sport, like I got to win the argument. I said, well, so what did you win? You know, I'm sharing you know, information. Isn't right? it? Isn't it? Isn't it more productive to conclude something? I mean, there's no productivity in staying in a state of chaos and flux and in uh, unsettledness. It could, be, it could be if you if you classify it those ways. But the thing is, isn't everything a, a program? It's like when somebody says to me, "What's the point?" I already know where they're coming from. They're coming from a very narrow outcome situation. They're not flexible enough. But, but you know something? Are you sure it's not from a good place? You know, with uh, uh, now the, I'm classifying uh, it. Empowering your it could be your giftedness. It could be, but when they're trying to imply that, where's my point? I said, whoever told you I was giving you a point, I'm giving you many points, but I'm sharing out loud. Whether or not you want to hear me, the concept is very clear. When I say this, Mike, when I share with people, the only thing I can ask of them if they choose to do it is hear me. Listening is done from within. So the word ear gives it away. So when somebody hears me, they can do whatever they want with it. But if they're telling me, Dominic, I understand you. I said, whoever told you that, that's your responsibility. If you understand the tree of life, it's about wisdom and understanding. It's your responsibility to understand. This goes back to, even if I wanted to care for another human being, Mike, I've never lived in their vessel. They're the only one that's lived in that vessel. So they have to learn, opposed to reacting, the ability to respond. So now for a person that says to me, well, Dominic, what purpose does that serve? I said, what's your purpose? You're better off leading what you understand. For me, I'm just sharing out loud. I'm the one that's going to debate me the most. And that's done alone. Now, when I share with other people, I'm not interested in writing a book on something because I understand what the book does to the brain, let alone I know what the oral teaching does. They're both afterthoughts. One is more advantageous to the general masses than the other. But for some people, they like to read information and they can do it. Some people could put a book underneath their, underneath their pillow and say, listen, if you truly grasp the concept that that book was written through inspiration, then you can only comprehend it through inspiration. So why are you spending all that time playing with your hemisphere, with your brain? You have many receivers in the body. So for me, I'm just sharing out loud. There is no end goal to that. And if there is, I'll be the first and probably last to grasp that. You might even be, you might even grasp it, Mike, but I still got to do that journey. Is there a perfect expression of the concepts that you play with um, in, uh, in bodily form? Perfect expression. While you're using the word expression, we have many emotions. Frustration is usually the, the one that I would have to say. And I guess I would say in, in a particular person currently me, or in history. For me, it's frustration. Now, we don't really hear because Jesus supposedly never wrote nothing, same with Socrates, but if we actually did, would he be talking in kindness? You know, Jesus stumbled over the money changer. What would he do with all the other consumers? Books is consumption. Reading stuff and listening to stuff is consumption. He would probably say, geez, all these, all these different characters are trying to sell everything at church. Now they even have in the church where they have the money basket guy in there. Like that's total hypocrisy. <laughs> so if you go to any church, go ahead. Well, I'll just tell you, I don't know that I would say that about any church because uh, let me just tell you about the church I go to. And I hope you don't hear this as a defensive no. argument, but just more of a, a expression of enlightenment. 
-hmm. We had a uh, Hurricane Michael wipe us out. Mm -hmm. oh. We did a reverse offering. We oh. loaded the basket up with cash and gift cards and passed it out so that mm -hmm. people could could make it. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, the concept of community is critical. Mm -hmm. you know, we bring up politics, and you know we're potentially headed for a situation where a society's dependence on government is going to come back and bite them in the butt. Mm -hmm. And it's that pure community that may be the uh, the most uh, important thing for um, for surviving those times. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Would you? Would you classify Jesus as a savior? He's an awakener. He's not a savior. So, and uh, would you would you argue that he has an enemy or no? No, uh, Jesus doesn't have an enemy. If he does, it's the, ma it's the masses. I get, Mike, I get the impression from you, Mike, that you probably, outside of giving money, you would actually go there and help people. Most people throw Caesar at it. Here's more money. You know, but that's, the, but that's those the, people don't those people don't control the decisions that we would make personally. Probably not. But the thing is, it's usually a selfish act to think that one human being overrides the many. So in this particular case, Jesus, whoever he was or wasn't, okay, regardless if he's been reincarnated, an immortal soul. If people understand the teachings, they're not going to be worrying about naming him. You'll be doing the but teachings. The, uh, the uh, well, the thing is, is. So and there's no surprise where I'm coming from, right? I mean, I'm not trying to hide that. You, and, favor, uh, that. you favor that, Mike. I got um, it. But uh, so if I were not to give credit to what compels me, mm -hmm. wouldn't I just be elevating myself and my own deeds? It could be. But also at the same time, if you find out Jesus is a different character, and he's not exactly what you guys all thought he was, you got to take that reward too. So that's your choice. Now, if you take up the teachings, because the teachings you can question, you can't question a, a person that no longer is here. And if he is here, he didn't say he's going to come back the second time with uh, kindness. He's going to come with a sword. And those wheat that you're talking right. about, yeah. But now, it's based on but, each individual action, what they do within themselves. It's more the, more the principalities, more your thoughts that you're but, doing. But yes. Scripture says that your righteousness is like a, a dirty uh, menstrual cloth. It so is. It's very why would you take comfort in your own actions? No, no. Take accountability for your actions. Yeah, but but can you? Sure, you can. Can you bear the consequence of your actions? I don't know about consequences. You'll get rewards. I, I lean towards rewards because you learn more from a reward, regardless if you think it's positive or negative. Consequences, people try to avoid it. Your rewards. So you how do you that? reconcile the second coming of Christ? And no consequences. Well, Jesus wasn't the second coming. The anointed one would be the second coming, yes. Jesus was probably a person that had a, a couple of walk-ins on, on him and uh, basically got into a long fast and got to see the devil from within himself because the devil does not work outside. He works inside. So, now, so you believe devil, the devil was in Jesus? No, I say the devil is actually has a purpose. He has a purpose, and his purpose is to be obedient. But it's not a God-given purpose. I don't know. I, a, I can't speak on that one. Mike, you might be able to, but I can't speak on behalf of God. And if you feel as though that you, you can speak on behalf of God, then explain exactly the sun and the moon. Why do they circle 108? Why does, you know, I can explain all the stuff on this plane, but I can't explain who created the plane. I give it a given that it just didn't happen by accident. Those are but don't you have to actively ignore scripture in order to maintain that level of, you know, and I'm doing these in air quotes, objectivity? Mike, I've read the scripture many times. I've actually fasted on the scripture many times. It's, uh, those are all different books within themselves. And I, don't, and I don't mind consuming all that information. I didn't set off to read it so I can be a follower of something. I, I read it because I want to know my place. Hence, understand. And unless a person does not know their place, they're a lost soul. Regardless if they join any group, they're still a lost Doesn't that create such uh, independence from God that it's almost a, a form of rebellion? Well, Mike, if I, mean, I went our out... Our creator intended for us free tree of knowledge to live in, in perfect oneness. Yep. And you're choosing, uh, I guess, perfect separation. No, I'm not. Mike, that, that already exists before I was born. Mike, for me personally. Right, but, but, but we're all born into it and, it, and it's and so it's something that we all have to deal with. You can't just pass the buck and say, hey, I'm not responsible for this, so therefore I'm washing my hands of it and it's not real to me. 
Well, most people say I mean, the word response. You can observe. Yes, I'm an observer. Yes, I'm an observer. Right, but, but, but doesn't your observations result in something that can, that can compel you in some direction beyond well, my, just uh, observing? You're talking to a person that realizes that the physical is only one limitation of observation. You can observe thoughts and emotions, intuition, insights. You can observe a lot of things. And when I say things, they're not always in the known. So now in this particular case, you say the word responsibility where it clearly shows most people are in reactive mode. That's why we have many words in the English language with the word act. That's the karma part of us. So now if God, whoever God or gods are, some of them are still in dormant. That's their choice. Now, whether or not you value that or not, again, I couldn't prove it to you even if I wanted to. Just because there's a whole bunch of books written on it doesn't prove anything. It might prove to a person, ah, I like my dogmas and that's fine. You might like the uniform. The concept of independent is delusional outside of the vessel. If you choose to no longer be with humankind and go out to nature, the best you could be is interdependent with nature. And that comes with sounds and frequencies. So now for me to think I'm independent when I'm actually coexisting within the plane of God's creation, and I'm going to use the word God, alien species, whatever, for me, whatever, because those are words. I'm, I'm using a language that's very cumbersome. English is a very meaningful language. It's not like Greek or Sanskrit and all that, or Latin, even Latin is actually a product of English. For me to look at something and say, okay, tree, there's more going up under the ground than above the ground. Now, the earth itself is its own polarity. You can ground yourself. That's why a car has a positive and negative because we're playing the same ideal as the sun and the moon. If something put all that in motion, we're doing a good job of disturbing it, but we're never going to wreck it. So now for me to think that I'm going to be saved, that's a very, on my part of view, is a very selfish act. That's the ego talking. I'm going to live outside of nature. I'm going to live outside, the, live without the grid and all that. So what are you really saying for the rest of humanity? I'm not saying you're doing that, Mike, but that's what most people are doing. And once you start putting rulers over you, then live and buy by the rulers that you have over you. You want man to rule over you, M-E-N, then take the rewards that come from it. If you want to take your chance with man, Take a chance with man. You want to take a chance with gods? Take it with gods. There's a good chance gods might look at it and says, you're not our product. We're not interested in you. If anything else, if we're going to be, weigh it up. Go ahead. I think it would be more productive if your you. observations were limited to the things that you find self-evident in you and not what you're associating with other people doing. Maybe. You're probably right, Mike. But the thing is, Michael, I'm an observer, both of myself. Once a person observes themselves... Ahead, but but your observations are imperfect, right? Yes, very much so. A lot of these assumptions about what other people are doing all a is conclusion. a distraction. It could be. It could be, Mike. I'm not here to tell you what to follow. But know, you know but something, Mike? We are here to talk about our, our, our convictions, right? No, no, I'm not. Mike, I, 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 was, I was raised Roman Catholic. That's state and religion joined together. Those are two dogmas. I've studied sure, enough but things. What I'm saying is, is where are you now? And don't don't confuse it. By making assumptions about what other people are at. No, I'm not telling Mike, you choose to be a Christian. All the power to you, Mike. I'm not I'm not right, saying right. you and, I, and I'm not being adversarial. I'm just trying to help us become more clear Who, so that we can come to maybe long, better conclusion. Mike, as long as you you value conclusions, so lead by that. I'm not but, included in but, that. But I'm, I'm not included in that, Mike. I choose not to be included in it. And I'm okay but, with that. I'm, I'm the, included in other things. I'm, I'm involved in other things. I'm just sharing but, with you my perceptions. That's it. I know, but but the perceptions are yours alone. Yeah, that's right. And they're about other people. Who and the rest them. is assumptions. I'm telling you that. You're just trying to... So what's the value in that? That brings me value. That, who might explain it to you? Mike, what, okay, why are you a Christian? What values does that bring to you? Obviously, you're going to tell me that. So what value does it bring to you? And then once you so, figure out the value for you, how does that expand towards your offsprings? And even that, you, you give them in the presence of all the other people that are in state and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll answer. Please. Yeah. So sure. I believe that there is a creator mm -hmm. that had a particular design in mind. Mm -hmm. And that particular design was one of perfect relationship mm -hmm. and perfect harmony. And in that perfect relationship, there was, uh, it was based on perfect love which requires choice, mm -hmm. which means he's not just going to impose his will, but he's going to let us uh, live out our freedom and, and, and appeal to us for, uh, to live, you know, good and, and righteous lives. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and unfortunately right out of the gate, uh, 
we, uh, we destroyed that relationship. And so there is a, a uh, reconciliation plan that is underway that still has a premise of love and free will to it. And I believe that the things that are classified as sin are things that are bad for us and not necessarily things that just create an emotional reaction from our creator. Uh, but because we're free to choose, you know, the, uh, there's some strong words in there that would help compel us in, a, in, a, in the direction that's better for us. And I believe that we are living a temporary life in the flesh that may be as long as 100 and say 20 years, mm -hmm. but we will live for eternity and our, our decisions that were made will determine our direction. And that direction is a permanent, a permanent existence, uh, either in paradise or in torment. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and there was a way made for imperfect people to get there. And that's by living under the Lordship of Jesus, you know, to be born again, to live under the Lordship. And because God wants that for everyone, Christians are called to go out and make disciples, to spread the good news of the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. And uh, so that I present that and I'm open for scrutiny. And, uh, and, and I would argue that you present nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Mike. Mike, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate you sharing that with me. And, uh, and thank and, you and, for and saying so, that I, I share nothing. I'm, and, I'm okay with that, Mike. No, no, I'm yeah, saying you share nothing um, foundationally. That's right. You know, you, 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 you hack away mm -hmm. at possibilities, yep. but you've offered, you know, nothing of substance to hang your hat on mm -hmm. other no, than... Oh, value points, Mike. Mike, and, I'm and not so, here to disagree with you. I'm not here to disagree with you, let alone agree with you. You know, I know if but, you're looking but, for an but, argument, uh, I'm the wrong guy to argue with. No, no, I'm, I'm, ex I'm expressing, uh, you know... Uh, I'm, I'm going outside my comfort zone to uh, confront you in something that I feel like is harmful to you in hopes of uh, maybe okay. causing you to think a little deeper. Well, I'm going to think. I don't know about deeper. That's like a person saying, going down in a rabbit hole. Do I look like a rabbit? No. So I get it. You're sharing with me certain things, Mike, and I appreciate you sharing. Now, out of your own mouth. God gave us the opportunity to have free will and pursue things. So if I choose to do that, I just don't go around always talking about who the creator is or isn't and what Job had to do or not do. That's my, that's my, those are my views. Whether or not but I'm that being same God, the great commission said mm -hmm. to go out and, and, and make disciples and spread the good news. So yes, is there, yes, Mike, you, I'm not looking to be a disciple. Under the Lord of I'm, not, I'm not looking to be a disciple. Thank you. But I appreciate that, but I will hear you. I enjoy when people share. I'm yeah. not leaning towards one or the other. I just, now, go ahead. So, so the opposite of love is apathy. And I just yes. don't want you to be apathetic. Uh, and, sometimes and, I experience and it comes from a good that, place. You know something? I, my issue on it, if I have an issue, is usually indifference. I, I like when people get angry or when other people get super joyous. Just don't become a pro either way. But that's my view. Now, I, I can say that out loud, but I'm not telling them out loud so I can energetically force them their will. That's their choice. You have many variations, like me, variations of the will. Free is one. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, energetically, the word free for them is really non-accountability. Most people are into reaction mode, which is fine. And I, I, I experience it too. We have moments that we do certain things. For me to sit in a church, whether I've been to many denominations, same with when people talk about politics, I'm neither an atheist, let alone I put so much value on religion. But those are things to explore for does me my, personally. Does my foundational, you know, my truth foundation uh, create concern for you? In any way, I mean, do you find fault in oh, it? Is it Mike, I invite people. Why it wouldn't apply to you, Mike? If there's, a, if I see people that are Mormon, Jehovah Witness, Seven Day Event, come on in. You I know, but I ask you a direct share. question. No, it doesn't. Does it? Does does oh, my it, does it, my it, view? It concerns me. It concerns me uh, because and, and, because of of uh, this. The objective, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the objective of Mike. One of them's on too loud, uh, Charo. The objective. 
Wait a minute. Let me lower the. And what one. I was going to get to is Hyro is uh, working on his IT issues. What I was going to get to is I would welcome uh, uh, critical perspectives that would question what I've presented. And, oh. uh, and you know, not like a, a shotgun of a thousand at a time, but like, you know, one at a time, I think it would be oh. quite valuable. Oh, I have one. <laughs> the objective, uh, or no, the game. The, the game, or, or maybe it's the attitude of, of Mike versus the, the attitude or game of, of, of Dominic. So the objective of Mike is to come to a conclusion, and, and so it's a finite game. So it has a goal, and then you reach an end and you can evaluate, did I obtain my goal? So it's a finite, so there's a beginning and a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. And and but the uh, but on the other hand, Dominic has no end in sight. It's a oh, continuous yeah. flow like a river. I'm so in awe. It's an infinite yeah. game. Mike, I'm in awe by so, nature. I mean, all by nature, regardless if the, the nature was created or left as a, as a residue from the gods or demigods, I'm in awe by nature. Now, I'm allowed to have philosophy wise and all that. And it doesn't mean that somebody's also going to give me the answer. If this is even an answer. So for me, I value the concept of a creator. I just don't give a name to it. Whether people want to call it Allah, Jesus, Muhammad, uh, that's fine. But for me, I'm still going to so, say, listen, go ahead, Mike. What is the benefit or what is the benefit, what is the consequence of having a finite game where, where, you, where you visualize a end in sight versus uh, an infinite game where there's no end in sight, but you just play the game? Or maybe uh, in that infinite game, you, you do have a, an attitude that that you're seeking, that you're mm -hmm. always striving to, to maybe not understand, but to liberate mm -hmm. uh, from confusion. Mm -hmm. So, so you you are open to uh, to new knowledge, but the person with a finite game is closed to new knowledge, but only wishes to uh, propagate that knowledge because that seems to be the objective. To have the whole world dominated by that one mouth. Mm -hmm. If we didn't eat from the tree, is that, a, is that a question to me? What, what, what do you think of that uh, summary? Because mm -hmm. there's a finite game being played by Mike, and there's a. I would say it was severely flawed. Being played by Dominic. Sure, what's on Mike? Sorry, I, I would say off. that's a mischaracterization. Could be. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that is that. So. Is there an end to all the things that might tickle your ear in your life? Do you think anybody will stop tickling your ear with something? Mike, I usually, I can consume easily on a regular day to 10 hours of information. I enjoy doing so, that. So comes at an expense an to me. The infinite way yes. is a life of constantly entertaining uh, random thoughts or ideas. Sometimes it's entertaining, yes. To tickle our own ears. Sometimes for me, Mike, I, but putting you in those words, it is entertainment, it's amusement, so just to fill in a void, could be a whole bunch of things, Mike, you know, no different a guy that decides to work uh, on a farm, or work in a factory, everybody consumes a lot of energy doing a lot of things, now, whether or not familiar breeds contempt, that's fine, I made a, I made a, a small little draw in the sand, not a big fork in the sand, that 20 years ago, I wanted to become more aware of a lot of information, and I've done it, and I'm still doing it, now, what compelled people, you to, to seek for that? Um, for me, initially, I was being a little bit of an asshole. I got married when I shouldn't have got married. Uh, I, I did a lot of grieving along the way, and I wasn't living my true self, whatever that may be, to my perception. Now, I've done all that, going to churches, going to monasteries and all that kind of stuff, learn a lot about religion, learn about finances, learn how economic works to a certain point. I don't have to be a professional at any particular thing. But I got a grasp of it. And there was a lot of evenings where I would just take in information within myself. And I'm like, okay, so what, what would that serve me? What, what so do you classify that? yourself as a, uh, 
is uh, like uh, maybe a, a god? No, I, I classify myself more full of shit. Wow. Well, Personally, then, Mike. But I'm okay you abandon that. that with that recognition. It is not about abandonment. That keeps me in check, Mike. That's me. No, I know, no, but no. Yes, yes. I think, wouldn't, Mike, wouldn't somewhere you, like, if, if you're full of shit, wouldn't you seek in moments, wisdom yes. higher than yourself? Mike, okay. First of all, Mike, you're still you're still trudging over the tree of knowledge. I'm talking the tree of life, wisdom, and understanding discernment i'm after discernment i'm not after knowledge i'm coming here to speak with you about knowledge i'm not interested in what it what is the basis of your discernment okay mike i'm gonna explain with you when you speak when you look what, what you're looking right now do you have a what are you doing right now you, you have your foot there right you're, you're on something right yeah okay so now when you're looking at that shovel where do you see the word shovel I, i'm not following you i mean Okay. I have a machete in my hand. Okay. Machete. Okay. My apologies. Where do you see the word machete? When I say the word and you just have the thought, where do you see it? Do you have the discernment to know that the material and the what's called spiritual are two different things? You don't see the word, let alone do you see the language, let alone the sound and frequency that comes from it. That's wisdom. But you're too busy caught up in knowing. You want to be caught up in the material. You think salvation comes in the material. Mm. Jesus was talking oh. about the... About it comes the through faith. Sure. But what are you giving faith to, the material or the unknown? The unknown, for sure. Okay, so now when people fear I themselves... Can't, I can't put God in a box. And fully no, no, no. It's, trust him. Forget about God. Put, put the word God aside for now. It's ever-presence. Now, when a person fears the unknown, how can you fear death when you've never experienced it unless you understand what the breath in and out is or isn't? That's discernment. I'm coming to you now from wisdom. Now, that's arrogant for me to say that, but if you understood the energy, if I was in your presence, you'd realize, well, then, Dom, who are you then? The question would be more for you. Who are you? You're not the body. You're not the physical. Body's its own intelligence. You're not your thoughts. You're having experience in thoughts. Both thoughts, both written and, and oral, is after thoughts. They're not ever be within thoughts or above thoughts. So now, when you're talking to me, you're going from a, you're scraping so lightly from the belief system to knowledge. No, number nine is number nine is the energy for the spiritual meeting the material. That's why when you multiply with anything except for zero, it comes back to back to number nine because the masses want to be spoon fed. They're not ever go on a journey by yourself and realize. Well, then how do we get the written work? The same way you got symbology. You're living in a material world. That's what the word evil means. Spiritual means good. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that day you shall surely die. Why? Because it has a limitation to it. 120 years. But are we immortal beings? Yes, you are. You are talking to a being right now. But you're classifying me by thinking, well, Dominic, I'm mm. trying to convert you. I'm not interested in being converted, Mike. But I'm also here not to t challenge you. You've been probably around too many Christians or too many atheists. And I'm not interested in all that kind of stuff. I'm I am a mystic. I'm also a seeker, seeker of information from within, not out without. Going to university to learn to become a doctor and a, or a lawyer proves what? That we know we no longer know how to take care of ourselves and handle our own affairs. Anytime you vote for somebody, you're telling me who you're stuck with. Now, for you to tell me, well, Dominic, what's that point? I said, I've given you thousands of points. Which one are you going to cling to so ever so dearly and realize where do you see the mm. word that you that I've just shared with you. When you see color, do you literally see black? Close your eyes. Do you see black? No, you don't. So when you come into the light from the darkness, then you realize Satan's this there to challenge us. He's the adversary. Do you really want to continue rebooting yourself over and over again? The fact that you're a Christian, be prepared to be rebooted. Now, whether or not you value Jesus or not, this kingdom has a ruler. Respect the ruler you're in. You're being dishonorable by thinking that, well, God's going to save me. I said, that's not his role. It's your wow. role Where to take accountability. Doesn't matter where I get it from. Go inwards. It has it's to. Me. You're professing it as truth. The, no, you're thinking somewhere. everything is truth. I'm telling you, I'm just sharing out loud. I could be honest or full of crap to myself, but that's my role. I know, yours. but if you don't have a basis for your statement, then why are you communicating it? Mike, I just told you, where do you get language? Did your parents teach you how to breathe? No. So then who's your teacher? Your parents didn't teach you. But those, those are distractions from the question yes. I asked you. No, you Yes, because you're looking for an answer. Exactly, because you made a statement. That's why you talk you about points. I'm not here to give you answers. That's your responsibility. If you don't have the answer, I don't. Then I'm is telling it really you right a now. fair question? A fair question. You're not really praying. You're not inquiring. Because if you inquire, you'd go into a state of peace, silence, and then you would meditate. You would listen. I have you peace. listen inward. I give you the, Are you sure? Did I give you the impression that I don't have peace? Yes.
Very by, much so. saying what? You're so chaotic, you don't even see past yourself. You're actually full of tell shit, Mike. You just don't know. I'm not here to no, tell you how. No, because please. you're hiding behind the concept of thinking there's a savior. You're not taking accountability. Are you growing your own food right now? No. Are you actually going around understanding how the sun and moon has to be located to plant your own seed? No. With, you become with a, a so... Spiritual life. Yes, spiritual. When you close your eyes and I say I the color black. A spiritual life. Yes. Do you see language? That's spiritual. It's called unknown. You don't see language. Do you see when you would, see the number I would, nine? I would You're, really love to appreciate your comment about me being chaotic because I'm willing to see it, but you can't just uh, lightly dust off, um, you know, like uh, vague, you know, vague, random, you know, comments. Mike, I'm going to tell you something That's I taught Jaro a long time ago. You're not teachable. Well, you're not even the okay. student yet. You're not even the student. You'd be the kind of person I have to bang you so, over the head so, so you, you can get your own attention. No, I'm not your teacher. You I'm a student. Yourself. I'm a student. I'm full of shit sometimes, but I'm still the student. Right. So how can you draw such strong conclusions? Then why you, are you a Christian then? You made a conclusion by thinking explained. Christian. Yes. And you value that. Detail. You, you value that, but you're still looking for an argument. I tell people an argument and no, debate, I'm not. masturbation, do I'm, it yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm on the Great Commission at this point. Well done, then. But I'm nobody yeah. to you. So, I'm so nobody. you see how many of these assumptions uh, yes. that you're making are false? No, Mike. If I'm making an assumption. You said, you said, you said that, uh, why am I looking for an argument? Mike, Mike if you're trying to trap me, Mike, Mike, if you're trying to trap me, you've gone from being smart to being wise to being clever. So please do yourself a big no, favor. I'm not, trying I'm to, not, I'm not trying your to adversary. You. I'm trying to what? Educate no, no. me? And trying to save me? That. Trying to convert me? Come no. on, Mike. I've heard them all the before, to, Mike. I'm Mike, you're full of shit at this moment. Straight yeah, out. You're full of shit. And you're probably going to leave pretty well, soon because it, you're going to get no. all upset because I'm calling you no. out on your own shit. I'm my own Dominic, person. I'm full of crap myself. Maybe people getting upset, but I'm, I'm not upset. I want to have a rest. Yeah, because you're indifferent. You're the one that's no, getting up because you're pompous. You're pompous right now. No. You're being a pompous. Yeah, well, that's Mike. another ugly yeah. assumption. Oh, really? So then challenge yeah. yourself on it. I'm just saying words. I could be full of crap, Mike. I don't I know. know. So you. why would I challenge myself on, on something like but that? But you're willing to challenge me. That's the irony. No. Tell we me your show point, up here. We, we, we show up here. Who's we? Who's we? You, Hiro, me. Yeah. We're here Hiro right knows now. that I'm, I'm here to amuse him. And that's fine. But for you, it's kind of well, like, so you, well, you got an argument with Dominic. You're going to prove a point. Mike, I really no, don't fucking care don't. who you are. Because that's your responsibility. Because you're the one that's lived why? in that vessel Where's the whole this time. Where's the ugliness coming from? Oh, poor Mike. You're really being offended. No, like, where is it coming from, honestly? No, Mike. I've been tippy toeing around you the whole time. From? Where is it coming what? from? Frustration yeah. because humanity as a whole, we're pretty a disgusting race. Have you never observed that? There's some kindness so, that we do. But you know something, Mike? Why would you be helping somebody if they're already, humanity is already helping themselves? Now, you're going around telling me certain things. That's fine. You're looking for a disciple. Are you not fine. here to develop a, a more accurate sight picture? Mike, I just shared with you. Do you see language? Do you see language? I just shared you some information. You spent most of your life. You're probably in your fifties. You're unaware of a I'm, lot of things. Who runs your vessel when when you're I'm responding when you're, to your comments? No, you're, you're reacting. You're comments. reacting, Mike. Who's 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 running your body right now as you're hearing me? It's not you. There's something beyond your scope of comprehension. Another distraction. We're Maybe. talking. You're probably here, right, and, and you got to right. evade the the conversation to go into some, you know, random uh, uh, mystical you know, uh, distractionary focus that Mike, doesn't result in anything. You're probably right, Mike. Let's go with that. But I'm, I'm still going to acknowledge the fact that you're projecting also too. Why? You don't think you're in the human race? No, I, I want, I want, what do you, uh, want? you know, specific feedback. Once a lack, I'm way, welcoming Mike. that. Okay, huh? once a lack is not a need. You're not, a, if you had said need, I would realize you're actually spiritual in tune. But the fact that you want to want, you're lacking. You want to be amused and entertained. So let me ask and you're, you you're actually offending me right now, Mike. Does the, uh, you're offending Disney, me right now, Mike. No, Mike, Are listen to me. Up? Hear me what I just said. No, you're offending me. Because in, you don't get the so. fact that you're amused by me. At least I won't let what you is. make your statements without no, challenging me. Mike, them? no, Mike, I don't really give a damn if you hear, you hear me or not. I've already showed you polite. You're more than willing to hear me. Don't think you're that you're polite here to, to the point that people agree with you. No, I could care less about agreeing or disagreeing, Mike. You just, well, again, you really did reverse went off psychology. When I asking you questions. Oh, Mike, okay, then please share, Mike. I'll gladly hear you, Mike. But don't pose it like a question. I'll hear you lead. You, you're, you're trying Dude. to be like, you're probably, get, you know something, if I was in your face, I'd be watching your body and you're probably digging like a little baffoon. <laughs> I got the best of them. You haven't served nothing for yourself. Is that, is that how you preach your shit? When, uh, 
when God said in the garden, yes, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil for you shall surely die. Yep. You are the epitome right now of the guy who ate of the tree. Talk for you yourself, Mike. Mike, we already know Don't I'm going to get, Mike, you know I'm already going to get served. Talk for yourself, Michael. Talk about your teachings. This is no, not about you're me. presenting this. No, you're the one that just brought it up. I said, I'll, I'll hear you. Dominic, Share. Dominic you, you made you made at least a dozen accusations of me. Slanderous accusations of me, and now you don't want okay, anybody to- Go ahead, okay. Make accusation of me, then as long as you know they're accusations, go ahead, please share. I know, but how, do you see the uh, double I, standard? No, you, 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 the, no, the there's credit no double. You give yourself for your- Mike, I've already told you hypocrisy. Horrible. Mike, I already told you my hypocrisy. I've just never heard you talk about your hypocrisy. I never heard you openly admit that you're full of shit. Because dare not you ever do that to yourself. Because you I think know, you're all hiding you your mic. Well, there when you I go, so hide behind it. Hide behind it. I'm okay with that. You can say you're Muslim too. You can say you're Buddhist too. You can say whatever is you want. Not a Christian, do you not realize that Christians inherently are flawed? That they admit to failure? I'm not sure that, Mike, because you're the one that said you're a Christian. I never once said I'm a Christian. But do you know what Christianity is? You said you went doesn't to church. Matter, Mike, you know it doesn't matter, Mike. It doesn't matter. You're the one that's saying well, you're, you're asking a me these questions. So th no, I'm not. And the questions, uh, the answers should be lead, apparent. Michael. Michael, lead. I'm okay if you lead. I'll, I'll gladly well, hear you. Doesn't mean I'm going to follow you. I'm going to hear you. Yeah. Unless you feel as though you need some sort of argument, which I give you that too, and it's kind of like, well, I don't want like to. Mike, please just lead. I this would, is your I existence. I would say that I'm sorry for upsetting you. But no, you're not upset me. Mike, I'm, like already, I'm already telling you, productive. lead. Mike, I, I'm okay with getting frustrated. I do that on a regular basis with myself. That's my issue, not yours. Don't get caught up in my shit. I think, I think I've given you enough. <laughs> I think I've given you enough. You give me enough. fuck all yet, Michael. You give me fuck all. That's what I'm asking. Share. Mike, you give me fuck all yet. You haven't even scratched the fucking surface. I have learned today that uh, there is a a presentation that that is a finite game so you have a beginning a middle and the end and then there's a presentation that is more like a river an endless river a river and it has no beginning no middle and end it just keeps flowing and so that is why I think that that this river will will drown the finite game because it happened in 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 history. Like for example, when when the uh, Americans uh, tried to prevent the Vietnam uh, people from becoming communists then they had a finite game and but the vietnamese they had an infinite game and it was uh, it was to survive and so and it also happens in in it seems to be happening in in the in the struggle between the invasion of Ru uh, of ukraine by the russians and so the ukrainians have an infinite game that's their survival. Hmm. But the Russians have a finite game that is determined by one man, Vladimir Putin. So, so that's why they're failing. And the infinite game of the Ukrainians is, is a winning, even though the Russians have maybe five or 10 times more, more manpower, a bigger military. Well, of course, Ukraine is getting helped by, by the NATO countries and the US. But, and that helps a lot with the, with the uh, technology and, and intelligence. But, uh, but so, so maybe um, the, the Christian um, dogma is too finite and that's why it's having uh, difficulty in, in expanding the, the minds of people because it's too, uh, bound to the to the scripture in the Bible, and and the, whereas look at Catholicism, it expanded because when it went to new lands like say Mexico, then it 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 uh, mixed with uh, the Mexican people 
And mm -hmm. so they, they created new forms, but uh, Protestantism is too strict with the dogma of one scripture and it sees anything that's different as pagan. So it tries to destroy that. So mm -hmm. it eliminated uh, uh, peoples and it, and, it, and it not simply converts them to the religion, but it makes them learn the language and everything and forget about your customs. Your customs are, are barbarian is no good. Will this will will cause cultural genocide on you? So that that's what uh, what I see as a problem. Well, sure. By the way, Gerald, that was uh, great. You know, because you do have battles and wars, and yes, there in history, if they, take it for a grain of salt, that's how. So it I was could really. say that Christianity. Uh, dogmatic Christianity uh, that, that's based on only the Bible and, and anything else is wrong is, is, is evil. It's not fair to say that because you got to factor in, in, in too. A, uh, if we want to, to preserve cultures around the world, it's evil. Well, you did say about changing the language. So a lot of times you, you can enslave another nation by changing the language on them, whether written or spoken. So like, again, back in the days when they were talking about all the different stories, scriptures that we call the Bible, um, they were written in Greek. And then they got, they got changed to Latin. And then Latin, it was more, see, Greek is a comprehension language. Latin is a combination of Germanic, French, Spanish, and English. It's a meaningful language. So now when people read the scriptures, they look for the meaning of it opposed to the comprehension of it. This is why when people philosophize, if you philosophize and you're one of the people that, as Mike was saying earlier about maybe some people, or in this case, you maybe say maybe, maybe me, gifted to, to take information, you need that comprehension language to be able to philosophize where a meaningful language is very cumbersome. You have many meanings for the same word. So we can skew the word Lord, let alone God, let alone mm. uh, the trees and all that kind of stuff. So in this particular case, they used to inherit, once you civilize people, we'll classify these other people as pagan. They're really closer to nature, closer to God. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make them follow our laws or our policies or man-made laws opposed to nature's laws. That's why a lot of us have lost, maybe not a lot of us, that's too generalization. Some people, they can observe nature and say, okay, why are all these animals that usually fight each other fleeing away? There must be a future hurricane that's going to happen or an earthquake or whatever. So they're attuned still to nature. But we're, a lot of us have lost that. You know, we don't have to go inside of a constructed building, we call it a synagogue, a church. When God's creation, his church is this. The clouds, the sun, the trees, this is all of whether God works in and out through all of that, or God could just be consciousness. It could be the prana, it could be chi. It's all in that particular perspective. That's me throwing out possibilities because I'm honest with myself. I couldn't prove it if I wanted to. And I'm surely not going to wait for some guy to say, well, Dominic, I finally wrote a book. It's like when my wife talks, sometimes she can put it in words. I'm thinking, Jude, you just explained something that was always rattling in my head, but I was never able, because I don't have that ability to put it in words. People can. I'm more of an agitator than I am about pleasantries. So Mike just got to see me being an agitator, but I'm agitating me now. I could be offending other people, no different than saying to him. Mike, you offended me, why? Because that's me being a poor little boy. And I'm okay with that because I'm gonna learn something from it. Okay, Dom, how can you better present yourself next time with Mike? Mike, Mike values or believes in other things, that's fine. But I value in certain things that are very similar to Mike. Mike's working with the ground today. He gets to earth himself. Jeez, I was always doing that. I only have my little grounding thing on my arm here. There's many possibilities in my views. That wouldn't go well if I was talking to a priest. I'd be giggling. I'm like, oh, okay, you could follow you like a monk. But that's me being arrogant. And it's like I wouldn't even be in a church anymore. I'm like, okay, that's of no interest to me. But I still do like reading scriptures. Same with the Quran. Or, you know, it'd be nice if uh, Christians or Muslims, some Muslims do it too, you start reading all the other different scriptures. Well, what about the beliefs of the Hindus? Well, that's teachings. What about Buddhism? That's teachings. What about Jesus Christ? Well, whether or not it's from Luke, Mark, or whatever, those are teachings. So are you actually going to be love thy neighbor? Who's thy neighbor? Who's closer than, than Jaro and Mike to me? My own body. That's the neighbor that it was being spoken about. My body. Now, that's me talking for me. Other people say, well, that's not the way I see it. Well, that's fine. But that's me yapping again. Long-winded conversation coming from Dom. You know, not to 
not to get pesty right away, but if you were to read that scripture in context, you'd know. Love thy neighbor, because it's preceded by it's easy enough to love people that are kind to you. So, you know, self-love is the easy part. Then it talks about loving others. So your neighbor in that scripture is not you. It is other people. You just said a word, Mike. Why would you say the word self-love opposed to loving the self? You said that out of reaction. The self should never be first. Self-aware, aware of the self. I mean, I guess you could dissect that, but that was Sure I am. Because Mike, I lead very intuitively. When I read a book or I I hear something, I go inwards. I listen. And there's certain receivers I have in my body. So what, I'm sorry, I I do want to understand. So what exception do you take out of the way I phrased it versus you? And and please remind me how I phrased it versus the way you prefer it. When you say the word self before anything, self-help, self-love, that's pride actually talking about. That's the ego. Okay. The ego doesn't know its place. It's not wrong with the ego, but aware of the self, helping the self, loving the self, know thyself, not the other way around. But that's the program. That that is like, give you an example, Mike. Just a simple example. Me and you are looking at a program now, whether you're looking through the phone or you're looking through an app. The app is the ego. The hard drive behind it, that's the higher self. But both of them are programmed. We're neither of those things. There's an energy so the, that we are. So I guess, because I don't want to get hung up on what I didn't intend to communicate. What I intended to communicate is, I question whether or not you're being honest enough with your review of scripture. And I extracted your um, comment on scripture in this specific instance, just to help you recognize, maybe you haven't read scripture accurately. Because again, I Mike, have you fasted? Have you ever fasted? Mike, have you ever fasted 40 days and read yeah. the scriptures? Have you ever yeah, 40 fasted days, for 40 no. days? Yeah, okay. So until you get there, Mike, please don't have that conversation with me, Dad. Okay. I so, fasted for I mean, 40 days, you, Mike. I fasted you many times. That your expression of that scripture is inaccurate. Because I think I feel like what you're telling me is okay. I can't read scripture as no. accurately as you because you fasted. For I'm doing days. the defense now because you're making the assumption by calling me inaccurate. So you honestly think you're accurate? No, no, I, I want to say go to the scripture and tell me whether or not what you just recited yes. is accurate. And all the prophets and I don't know of why old. you bring up the distraction okay. of all the, the fasting. All the prophets of old were inspired and then it was written down. It's through inspiration that you're going to get the information. Regardless if the books have been misled or not or rewritten, if you're going to go inwards and then something tells you the way that's written and the way it was it was meant to be spoken, let alone orally, because orally is a, by, by far more superior than the written work, it's different. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, good or bad. It's just different. And you'll pick up the residence of it. But once you fast long enough, you realize you're giving the higher source, the, the being part of you, chance to rest so then it can help you. This is why even the Buddha, let me fast and meditate on that. Let me abstain from eating food because something's always processing the food and then I can listen to it. It's like me giving you many tasks and meanwhile, I'll give you more tasks, give you a chance to take a break so then you can focus on what I'm, what I'm sharing. That's all I'm doing. I'm not asking you to understand me, just to hear so me. Is that to say you're inerrant? What? Are you inerrant because of your fast? No. No, that's me being okay, egotistical. Then, then, that's me being egotistical. No, that's me being egotistical. And I was using that as a tool to help you wake up to these. Um, okay, so Mike, hold on. Very, very. Uh, by very, telling uh, me. Conclusions. Okay, by telling me that I've erred in scripture, is that not your ego talking to? No, how I'm would saying, you, let's how go would to you it know? And look at how it. would you know? Mike, I could rip any let's priest in front of me. Mike, let's why? Let's go and look at it. Because read, you read it, it because you put it out there. Yes, go ahead. Who's thy neighbor? Not outside. You've never been outside of that vessel. Your neighbor's your vessel. And until you become aware of that, Mike, you're going to think everything's external. Mike, when you look across the where you are now, when you look across, are you over there? Are you still here? When you go in a car, you're still there. When you're in a shower, you're still here. When you're inside your wife, you're still here. You're always inside that vessel. You've never left that vessel. That's the illusion you play on oneself. We all do that. But once you become aware of that kind of stuff, then you can pursue knowledge from a different perspective. Then you can read the scriptures, hmm, interestingly, differently. Why? Because you're reading it from an indoctrinating position. Now, if you want to quote scriptures, I'll gladly hear you. But don't think for one second I'm going to not listen inwards and say, Dominic, that's a funny kind of story he's telling you. But hey, you want to go with it. But I, I could be misled too, but I'm okay with it. I'm just not going to go around telling other people, well, you're wrong. I, I, you're I, if you're okay with it, then why wouldn't you uh, consider it? I told you my perception of what I think 
closer to. Love thy neighbor. I told you mine. I never told you yours. You're so I know, caught where up. Where are you in. getting that from? Does it matter? Listen to it the word. Does, does matter. it matter to who? Who it does it matter to? Our, between me and you. Hold on. You're, between you're talking me. about you're talking about uh, the Christian faith, and you're quoting from no. scripture, but you're misquoting scripture. Hold on, hold on. First of all, I said, "Who does it matter?" You will say, "Dominic, it matters to you." you you're speaking for yourself for me i'm just saying out loud if it matters to me i'm always willing to still question myself myself right, so let me just ask you. yes please is this is this a semi-serious engagement or is this just foolishness um i'm talking more from sincerity but if you want to talk serious and silly you can go ahead i don't i don't get well, caught up in your serious saying, i'm so, talking so, out of sincerity so so why why isn't there dialogue why isn't because why you're talking to erupt emotions when, you re, when i want you, to uh, question anything and dive deeper because in a lot of you way you just revealed yourself michael you always have conversations no, no, seriously but am seriously, i am here, i here am the I word in control that you just of said. your emotions here you're not have control no, of your I, me being affected by my emotion it reveals me regardless if i'm in exactly. your presence or not now mike you said it even now serious the energy of serious and silliness are very close. Sincerity is a different energy. When I say to you out of sincerity, I don't give a shit who you are. It's because I'm aware that even if I wanted to, you're the only person that's ever lived in that vessel. So it's only going to benefit you. And not I'll, me. Just, I'll just tell you, if you could yes. hear me out just briefly, yes. I'm not calling you out because I don't like you. I'm not calling you out because I want to exercise pride. I'm not calling you out for any other reason than as you express yourself, typically in a fairly humble and objective manner when there's an area that you've applied that doesn't resonate with the truth of scripture as it's written in plain english i'd like to raise that issue for assessment and, and when i do that it, it you erupt emotionally in such a hostile way that it we, we can't really have a, a, a normal conversation to me i think that's the value of, of a venue like this for you, okay. you're being too fragile to have honest conversations. Okay, so am I? Am I and, and I'm to... surprised at that because you're so humble in other aspects. Well, but am but, I supposed to you ignore? Got to the... have agreement. Okay, but am I supposed to ignore the fact that you just said plain English when I openly, repeatedly told you the English language is a cumbersome language? It's a meaningful language. When it was, but written it's the one English... we're using, so we can't dismiss. Uh, we can't dismiss it completely. Yes, and, and if, that, that's that's just embracing no, chaos. No, not dismissing it, Mike. Chaos. But because it's English, it has many interpretations. This is why we're going but to we, have different meanings to the scriptures. If it was Greek, it would be a comprehension language, no different Africa. That means something if you're going to use the word meaning, but you at least know what it is. If I show you a tree, you're going to know. Go back. What's that? We could go back into that. We could dig. We could dig deeper. We could, but, Mike. But, but the but trouble the, is, is I don't know that, that there's an interest in that because there's this very rapid and loose application of a variety of areas of scripture that are being applied randomly and incorrectly and it's all to uh probably appease an ego that just doesn't want to be nailed down to anything specific okay. and i think that's an attack by the enemy okay so let me ask you something mike do you have conversations about sanskrit do i have what conversation about the language sanskrit or chakras or singing bowls? Nope. Okay, you don't. Nope. So do you have conversations about Allah? Uh, yes. Okay, so you do talk a little bit about the scriptures in Quran? Yes. Okay, what about Hindu? Uh, less about so. Yes. Okay, what about Buddhism? Less so. Okay, what about Mormon, the way they perceive the, the scriptures? Yes. Okay, what about Jehovah familiar. Witness? What about Jehovah Witness? I'm familiar. I'm okay. familiar. Ba the Bala. That's another kind of sector, but that's not Christianity or Seven Day Adventists. I that's enjoy probably it. enough. So okay, what's but I like to float around. I when I talk sports, I talk about all kinds of sports. Now I know so, when I'm talking. So let to certain me ask people, you though. Yes. Is that a strength or is that a weakness? It's a curiosity because, on my part. It's a curiosity. But, so I told but you you've landed nowhere. If you want to perceive me as landing nowhere, I'm okay with that, Mike. I know. I'm okay. So so but, the, are you, so but you're making it sound like it's all true. How do you how do you present uh, that you have any sort of uh, absolutes or truths? I don't. That's the so, uh, Mike. Mike, I play chess. Okay, I'll give you an example, Mike. I could play anybody in the world that knows how to play chess. Chess. Now, somebody could turn us without. That's not true. I said I'm telling you what I can do. Now, some people said, but you can't win. I said, whoever told you I'm, I value the outcome. 
See, I don't value the outcome. You've been talking about points, outcomes, and that's fine. Sports has outcomes. The two ha is from one plus one equals two, but I like to play with possibilities. 100 minus 98, two times one. That's me. You're, you're hearing a person that talks about possibilities. I do realize there's outcomes. I'm just not caught up in it. When I play pool with my buddies, I'd like to learn the game. I'm not concerned about winning or losing. That's just me. I'm, that's the kind of person I am. I'm not going to say I'm strange. There's some people that are probably the same, very similar. That's their choice. So for you, you value, you truly value. I don't care if it's from a belief system, knowledge, wisdom. Yeah. You value what you're learning from Christianity. All the power to you. I'm not cursing you. I'm not blessing you. I'm just saying all the power to you because it's your power you're going to take, not mine. I like talking about stones, crystals, singing bowls. I like to talk about Reiki. I like to talk about a lot of things. And then I go inwards. I'm like, okay, Dominic, you can read on this stuff. You can go inwards. You can hear other people. You want to talk about other things? Yeah, let's talk about flat earth, round earth. Sure, why not? It's, it'll test me to see whether or not I've actually chosen to have a side. That's my limitations. Now, for other people, they like comforts. Some people like structure. I'm okay with chaos. But every so often when I present myself to other people, there'll be some order. But overall, you, I've heard it numerous times out of your mouth. It wouldn't work for you, Mike. And you just say it to me. Well, Dominic, that seems very disorganized. You don't say it in those words. That's, that's fine. I'm okay with that, Mike. But at least you know where I stand if you think you can understand me. But to really understand me, you would have to know my upbringing. You would have to know all the things I do privately, let alone publicly. You would have to know my family upbringing. You have to know the works I did then who will be taking care of your kingdom when you're too busy on my kingdom? That's my views. That's all they are. But you're not going to see me write a book on it. Even though Jaro decides he wants to record it, that's his views. And everybody can say, well, Dominic, oh. you have two cents. That's fine. So you come from, uh, Dominic comes from the view of having no views. And Mike comes from the view of that there is only one view. And we have... No, he doesn't come from this one view, Joe. That's not fair to say. No, that's not fair to say. He's not coming from one view. I'm just practicing... That the view is correct, that it is true. So there are benefits to having the one view because it is a, like a laser. It can cut through things because everything is synchronized and, and when the waves are synchronized, they are more powerful. And Dominic, it, it has the advantage, no, it's no. kind of like well, water, it cannot be held down. No, it Bruce can Lee flow now. into crevices mm -hmm. that the uh, solid view cannot. What do you think? Jarl, I've said before, Instead of saying me anyway, right and wrong, right and left. That's those are directions. Mike, from what I'm hearing, has a very strong conviction towards certain directions and he has views. That's fine. For me, I practice every so often, even though I like peeks his little head when I get angry and I say shit like, Mike, you offended me. That's me being a child. Where I'm trying to practice non-attachments. To be attached to the Buddhist teachings, be attached to the Christian teachings, as long as I actually study it and try to go inward and say, well, then how do I emulate that into the physical? Why? What do you mean? Because some of it's not even meant for the physical. It's meant for the spiritual. You know, Paul said it. You're not combating flesh and blood. You're, you're, you're combating principalities. Where do you think they exist? You think they do in the physical? No. Second dimension, third dimension is just one part of the one dimension, which is the physical. But the other dimensions, the emotions and mental planes, those are other dimensions. Time is another dimension. I like to entertain those kind of ideals. Could I literally prove it to Mike and Jaro? Probably not. Could I do a whole bunch of books? Well, first of all, you guys would have to be conditioned how to read. That's one degree. You would have to know how to, to read it, let alone write it. There's another degree. You need to actually basically know how to speak the language. There's another degree. You, know you have to know how to hear the, that language in English. That's another degree. Then you have to know how to have thoughts in that degree, in that language. There's five degrees with one language. But meanwhile, want people want to play 33 degrees. Mike, I'm the kind of person, I'll tell Masons guys, you guys are children still. Why? Because we're all children. Only reason why I say that, I want to know if they're still emotionally developed, because those are the ch child year and years where when I'm doing my little tantrum, I'm sharing with people between the age of seven, seven and 14, I really truly didn't develop my emotions. Because if I truly developed my emotions, and most people did, we wouldn't have wars. 
people would not be fighting for my country, fighting for my friend got killed. That's a person that's underdeveloped emotionally. We just look at people that are worst case scenario, narcissists, psychopaths, sociopath. But what about the people that are with them? You know, where, where's their issues? If there's an issue to be had. Now, Mike, I'm not here to condemn Christianity. I'd like to read the teachings. Now, if I misread it, like you said, so be it. I'm pretty sure people have put their hands on the stove and say, well, gee, I'll never do that again. Are you sure? What do you mean? Well, you just told me last week you were actually out in, out in the sun and you didn't put cream on your hands, so you burnt your hand again. So really, where can you say you didn't? You learned your lesson that you're going to protect your hands? I can almost assure you you're not going to wear gloves out in the cold or you're going to do, do gardening and not put gloves on and get splinters. So where are we actually learning our lessons from not harming a particular object called the hand? <laughs> but that's what we do. And, and please understand why I, why, I, why I pointed that out. The reason why I pointed that out is because I feel like in part of seeking truth, we scrutinize things. Yes. And I just want to make sure that the scrutinization that's been applied has been applied fairly. So if I find that there's been an area of scripture that hasn't been scrutinized fairly, that has stood up to my scrutiny for truth, mm -hmm. then I'd like the freedom to raise that issue in more detail yes. so that, you know we can use this venue to gain knowledge gain understanding mike i've shared with people my 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 view freely and openly about my interpretation <laughs> of genesis now other people have condemned me i'm thinking that's fine why huh. you're not the first I mean, and the last but i'm not here to scrutinize you, but you did that to me. When I shared with you my it's view not, on what I think the law... You. It's mm. your understanding, and it's, uh, for, it's, and it's for the sake of coming to a, uh, a well-vetted re reflection. You know, like, I mean, like, mm. are, let me ask you this. Are you threatened by the idea of someone taking your current perspective and talking to it in more detail and not necessarily in a complimentary way of what you currently understand is that is that a threatening thing and well, if so what it's a tire it's a tiresome thing not a threatening thing it's tiresome because you've already thought it out enough and you don't need anybody else well, to help you think it. well I, I i like to share with people and people are more than willing to share their views now if they don't agree with what i just said because i'm not looking for them to agree they're more than welcome to share by leading leading and following is done from within oh, so if you want to lead no dialogue so, you know, it, it, it is a dialogue. It is, so, but you're, you're asking me to adhere to you by agreeing with you. I'm not going to no. give you that. Reflect. I am reflect. reflecting. Reflect. Challenge, so, challenge each other. So, uh, maybe, maybe challenge. So, Mike is coming from the view that there is one absolute correct interpretation of a scripture, and we must try to find it through maybe reasoning and cross-referencing and and I would I would dominate I, let me stop you there Tyro from uh, the view that it's more like poetry no it's not a pair interpret it the way you want to let maybe. Mike explain himself I don't think you give a, a fair depiction of what Mike's trying to share but go ahead please Mike sorry Jaro because so, because I will say that scripture is alive and and, mm -hmm. and and it has deeper and deeper meaning mm -hmm. and, oh. and, and, it, and and that is imparted to you by God as you uh, begin to walk in his ways. Mm -hmm. And so a, what you might read on the surface, huh? Is alive in that, that means that, that over time it adapts or it, it, it can be flexible and change meaning. To it's, different it, people, maybe? I don't think it. I don't think it ever changes meaning, but I think it reveals more and more as you grow in your spiritual maturity. Oh, Look, Mike, I can say straight out, I've been inspired when I read certain information, or or I've listened to audio when I'm actually half asleep. I've been inspired, but then again, I could easily turn around and say, you know something, that could have been the devil. But you know something, I'm at least noted. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going around telling other people with books, and I'm not being a minister at all. It's of no interest to me. For me, I don't mind sharing once in a while, 
Because, Mike, I know you favor Christianity. I don't mind sharing that. If you were a Buddhist, like Jaro enjoys doing it, I'll share that. If you're a Hindu, I would share that. I like to have a circle of people. They're not my friends. They're just acquaintances. I like to share with them. I do value my enemies more than my friends because at least they'll spend time trying to get to know me opposed to telling me what they think I should think like. There's the difference. Mike, if you are actually questioning yourself in my presence or challenging me to a certain point to be my enemy, then you could be my friend because that's what I do with myself. Now, if I don't do that oh, with but, myself, but uh, Mike is not challenging you personally. No, he's defending. Mike is challenging the presentation and interpretation mm -hmm. of of what is in the scripture, mm -hmm. so that it would be uh, uh, it would maybe show you the correct way of thinking about it. And who, 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 who deciphers what's correct? Oh, who? Because if you've been gifted, if you've been gifted. Oh, maybe the, the, the only way to know that would be to become a Bible scholar. No. And, oh, maybe go back and try and talk to the authors of the Gospels and even talk to Jesus. What, and ask, what did you mean by that? And yeah. you would have to learn his language. But Gerald, his language, the way he expresses it, might lose meaning when it gets translated to Greek and then into English, because Jesus might might be might be making a joke in in what he said that, that that it or might be creating a rhyme in his language that he talked, but it got lost in translation upon translation that we miss out on the on the uh, on the uh, wit of Jesus. Gerald, my experience, like my, my experience when I've been in the presence of people that are scholars, they lead with their hemisphere, left hemisphere, they defend with the right hemisphere, and they deny their intuition part. So now a scholar is exactly what it is. He's a well well read person. Rami's that way. He's very read, well read, but he doesn't understand what reading does to the hemispheres. If you read the Bible in a different part of the world, the hemispheres would be different. So now the brain is different than the mind. The mind, man, M-A-N, is running the show. Now, the emotions are with, contained within it. So now when a person is doing a perpetual defense and attack, I'm not here to defend a view that I have that was inspired. Now, it could be full of crap, but those are my views. Now, when somebody else goes around questioning me, but then they don't, they've never showed that they ever questioned themselves, then I have to ask myself, so when did you decide to think the highway, the, the off ramps better than the highway? That's the person punking around their opinions, which is fine. I do that quite well myself, but I'm not going around trying to tell somebody else, well, you're wrong. I don't go around saying, well, you misread this. I don't go around saying that. So no interest in me. I'll gladly share. It might even sound with authority, but I don't go around telling other people. That's your life. You want to go on that skateboard, go down that cliff, all the power to you. So now Mike, I've been hearing him. Mike's been defending something, whether he's aware of it or not. And he'll do it right now in a second because he's going to run. Well, that's not what I've been trying to do. That's all you've been doing, Mike. You've been trying to defend something by telling me I misquoted the scripture when it was written through inspiration. It's afterthoughts. Now, if you want to go, it's okay. No problem. Anyway, he said he can't hear. But anyway, that's his choice. Outside of all of that, Jaro, this has been a long mm, mind uh, brain fart or whatever it's called. There is uh, sewage. I, I use words for this kind of stuff. I think Mike's intention is honorable enough. And if it brings him value, all the power to him. But for me, I don't like to engage. If a person wants to talk about their sexual preference, do it privately. I don't, you don't need the public, al al uh, public acceptance of society to say, well, you know something, but I want to be gay. That's your choice, but make it a private matter. Because you're not, you're, you're just showing that, oh, emotionally, I need somebody to agree with me. I'm sorry that your parents didn't agree with your sexual preference, but make that a private matter. Same I with am, you. I am voting. Today I am voting. And what happens if I come to a can candidate that is anti-abortion or is pro-abortion? then I should refer to the scriptures and see, oh, and even uh, maybe even Buddhism would say that it is uh, uh, non-virtuous to kill uh, life. 
And so, so Jaro, Jaro, let's analyze that and say, well, when does life begin? Okay, so Jaro, let's go with this, okay? Let's say people don't follow the rules. Say a woman gets raped. Are you there? So, uh, a woman gets am raped. Am I still here? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Jaro, yes, if, a woman, uh, if, a, if a woman gets uh, raped. Mike, Mike got kicked out. You'll be back. But Jaro, hear me out for a second, okay? On the anti-abortion. If oh, a woman gets raped, I have to let, I have to run to the computer okay. and and uh, and get him in. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> run, 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 run. Take your time, Jarl. Don't trip. And now I'm going to let him in. But are you can you at least hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. If a woman now. gets raped, waiting room. What? what admit. Oh, I let him in. <laughs> okay. What what law did a man in French? Welcome rape? back, Mike. Our special guest. Oh, I'm back. Hey, am I still there? Yep. Hey, I don't uh, know what happened. I was still connected, but I had no audio. No problem. So, Jaro was. Jaro I, Jaro I was went just... to the bathroom, and maybe that caused a this interruption in your connection. Mm -hmm. Then I had to run back here and admit you. Mm -hmm. Thank you <laughs> for saying that you were trying to get back in because I saw that in in a message, uh, Facebook Messenger. <laughs> oh, good. I get notified. Joe's talking okay. about voting for abortion. So this is the conversation. <laughs> if Look, somebody- I got my, I got my, uh, my ballot. I'm filling it out okay. so far. So let's say there's a law that Dem you shouldn't Democrat rape a woman. so far. <laughs> let's say there's a law saying that you shouldn't rape a woman, but you choose to rape a woman. Now this woman has an offspring within her mm -hmm. womb. Now, this is where people get caught up in the abortion. They'll actually, some people believe in, through thoughts, forget about the physical, through thoughts that that person should be killed because they believe in abortions. Well, unless you've lived as, as a woman that are in a situation and different circumstances, such as, do I have economic means? Hmm. I'm going to Google the names of the people I'm voting for to see which one I should choose. But what are these? Marco Rubio is Hispanic. Oh, you might want to vote for Rubio. He's Hispanic, Hira. Oh, but my sister. So is DeSantis. Said, oh, oh no, I didn't <laughs> vote for that. But my sister is a is an evil influencer. She influenced me to vote for. She said, "Now don't vote for Marco Rubio." And then, uh. And then, then, oh, I, 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 the reason why I like Ron DeSantis, but I voted for Charlie Crist because I want Ron DeSantis to lose so that he can run for president. Isn't that nice of me? He, yeah, that he was be, pretty nice. If he wins, then he'll be busy governing Florida. He should reach for the stars and be greedy Wait. and grab the big yeah. apple. Are you just trying to get somebody to run against Trump that has a chance of beating him? Are you sure you don't have some other nefarious uh, logic behind your vote? Oh, but isn't isn't Ron DeSantis considered Trump 2.0? He he's he's like like uh, Trump says I created him or, or I, I I made him or something like that, hmm. and he should be he should be. He should be uh, grateful for me having, but then Ron DeSantis is trying to not upset him. But then when he has a chance, he will crucify Trump and beat him at his own game. This so is he, like watching a, 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 a ninth inning World Series game. And so that's why they say they call him Trump 2.0 because he, he's just as, as brilliant as Trump but even more, I don't know. He seems to be more um, well-read, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. He's got he go to check. Yale and Harvard. He was in the military. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Oh, now I'm going to look up chief financial officer. <laughs> Who's running for that? 
Jimmy Petronas, and Adam Hattersley. Jonas has done a good job with regard to hurricane claims. Who? It's a Patronus. Patronus? Oh, yeah. He's done. He's done really good as far as uh, uh, managing the uh, insurance claims associated with hurricanes. Oh, looked out for Floridians real well. Um, right now, he's uh, he's working on some pretty challenging uh, rules. I don't know if you've ever heard of um, uh, assignment of benefits, but uh -huh. basically what, what's happened in this state is, um, especially with like older people who just, you just anybody could be overwhelmed when they have um, a catastrophic event like a hurricane. Oh, wow. Um, speaking from experience. Um, but uh, what a lot of people will do because they're panicked is they'll sign what's called an assignment of benefits. What happens? after a catastrophic event like that is uh, a bunch of uh, contractors are basically storm chasers and they'll come in with a contract and they'll get you know as many people as they can to sign these assignment of benefits and they'll just say, hey, don't worry about a thing, we'll take care of it all. And what happens after you sign that is you can no longer speak with your insurance company. You just uh, deferred all the rights for negotiation on your policy to that contractor and and, uh -huh. and so one of the things that patronus is working on is uh so we still have a a situation where the consumer is legally uh legally has the upper hand on the insuring the insurance company um uh -huh. but when a contractor who's really smart on how to uh exercise those rights oh, um they end evil. up uh they end Sneaky. up taking um the insurance companies for a lot more money than what they should have uh -oh. and so you know say like a hundred thousand dollar claim turns into like a four hundred thousand dollar claim when wow. um a hundred thousand dollars was enough but because of the way we try to protect the rights of the consumer those same rules apply to the contractor who's so savvy when he gets that uh, AOB letter. And so right now what they're trying to do is they're trying to put forth legislation that evens the, um, evens the playing field between contractors and insurance companies so that claims won't so get so out of hand, but doesn't take away the rights of the actual insur in insured. And so it's a pretty complicated situation, but. Um, it's necessary just because of the amount of money that um, could exchange hands. So um, I so should tell my friend whose wall fell down after this recent hurricane, well, uh, backyard wall, uh, uh -huh. like cement block, and the wind uh -huh. just knocked it down. And it's just oh, wow. rain and, and, and people could walk right into the backyard. Well, uh, they put some yellow tape around it. But, uh, Did they make a claim? And she's uh, looking for someone to fix it, but she had she she uh, doesn't know anything of what to do. So so she, she uh, I took pictures of it, and maybe mm -hmm. I'll put it on Craigslist and say, can somebody help fix this wall? Maybe replace it with uh, a wooden fence or something. <laughs> no, but no, that that would be a mistake. Get something? No, I've I've been through this. So what what she needs to do is she needs to call her insurance company and get an assessment made that's step one and then oh. um do you know who her insurance company is who she's insured oh with? oh so she 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 needs to have like a file home claim. insurance and go through does she the not have insurance, insurance? like yeah. a home yeah. insurance or does it have to be a hurricane insurance well um they'll make that determination and then you'll go from there uh but it, it, since it was wind damage, um, it's probably hurricane. Does she not have hurricane insurance? No, oh, probably uh, doesn't. <laughs> well, Does that, she, it, she, she can still try to, um, to you know, contact her insurance company. And then if for some reason um, she gets denied coverage, she could try to get uh, the CFO's office, you know, Patronus's office to help her. 
um, go oh. to my FL, uh, my Florida CFO, and uh, talk to one of their representatives, and they'll let her know whether or not there's any way that she can get her damage covered. Um, but my but they will. Florida CFO. FLCFO dot com maybe or org. Just Google it and it'll tell you which is the right one. But yeah, um, they have a eight hundred number. They're real. They're real helpful. My Florida CFO. Yep. My Florida CFO dot com. Mm -hmm. Florida Department of Financial Services. Yep. So the insurance companies that want to operate in the state of Florida operate at the pleasure of the CFO. So the CFO essentially has the power to say, you know what, you're not treating the people of Florida well, you're not doing business here anymore. And uh, so sometimes like um, they helped us out a lot when when we were getting the runaround. Um, With Michael. And, you know, our uh, we had a. Uh, Yep, with Hurricane Michael. Yeah, if it wasn't for the CFO office, we we probably would have had a much harder time. I'm voting for Jimmy Petronas, and he's Republican, and my sister's gonna be upset. <laughs> yeah. uh, to to he be honest, to uh, you're, you're not doing wrong Democrat with him because all uh, the way down. Mm. There, I filled it out. Well, I, I'm down to that. To Jimmy Patronus? Let's see. There? Jimmy Patronus? Now next is Commissioner of Agriculture. Oh, that's important. Without that, we won't get food on our plate. <laughs> Citrus? Maybe, uh, what else do they grow here? Sugar cane? Mm, some corn, maybe? <laughs> some pigs? <laughs> you know. We need to come up with a recipe for uh, anacondas and uh, and um, oh, crocodiles, alligators. Hey, anacondas. And what what are those oh, uh, lizard anaconda. things? Those big lizards. Oh, what are those? Iguanas. Iguana? Yeah. Oh. Our iguana and anaconda uh, agricultural industry is booming. Oh. and it tastes like chicken. I haven't found out yet, but. So, oh, Commissioner of Agriculture. Well, we have a Wilton Simpson versus mm. Naomi Esther Lenmore. Let's see what they. Who's the prettier one? <laughs> Ira, who else was on this meeting earlier today? Was there, did it start off as a bigger crowd or was it a small group today? Oh, at one point we had about five or six and we had two new unknown people. There was this guy named Peter and this lady named, I forget, De, 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 De Moore? No, so I <laughs> forget. I've never seen them before. I couldn't even see them. They had, they had a uh, no no video, <laughs> maybe a picture or something. Something they pulled up, put in there. <laughs> they they uh, didn't talk. They didn't talk much, and then they left. Um, Dominic scared them away. <laughs> oh no! Oh, where where's Dominic? Did he leave? Did he drop? Hey, uh, I want to uh, I want to review today's about, video. Talk, talk bad about Dominic now. Oh, but it's recorded, so they he'll, he'll watch later and see. Ah, oh, look how they bad they talk to me about me. I want to I want to record <laughs> later because I when I open my uh, my mouth, I don't always know how I come across, and I I want to I want to find out uh, exactly what I said and how all that transpired. Hmm. Yes, and. Like a play-by-play -play action of, uh, oh, he said this, and then he came back with this, and then, oh, it escalated, and then, boom, and there was a knockout punch. <laughs> oh. Something like that. <laughs> Sometimes mm. it's pretty funny. 
I can't wait to see it. Yes, this was a good conversation. You I thought think, so? I think uh, some, some, uh, yes, some uh, good statements of a uh, mission statement by player um, Mike Nigro. And I just uh, want to be transparent. I, and, I feel uh, like uh, I'm and, open for scrutiny. Uh, rope, rope a dope by Dominic Terstingi kept it going for the 20th round and then he he fell from exhaustion or something. Maybe he had to go eat lunch. <laughs> it was the rope a dope. <laughs> oh no, my phone is shutting down. No, oh, I still got the the recording going on on the I got the uh, desktop and it's going on. Oh, you still there? Hey, Hyra, I guess uh, I may have lost one of your connections, uh, but this probably has gone on long enough. I'll look forward to the video if you don't mind sending me the link. Have a good day. Hello? Oh, okay. So it's working. Okay. So I didn't expect this to go on so long. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Oh. Uh, there were some moments where I where I had to do some other things, uh, like go to the bathroom. <laughs> Is, uh, yeah, so it had its ups and downs. Um, yes, like I said, that maybe it wasn't recorded. I was thinking, oh, from seven to nine, and then I'll, uh, maybe I'll sleep because I haven't slept all night. But it turned out from seven to one. 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And there were some highlights where uh, maybe five or six were in the room with two new people, maybe around 8, 8 a.m. And then it dropped down to one for a few hours. And then I uh, saw that, that my friend Mike Nigro was, um, was sending messages uh, to my messenger and I saw it on the phone so I invited him hey join us I typed in join us and he joined us and then so we had uh, some conversation uh, where uh, like I tried to summarize it I don't know if if um, if this is valid but I I saw Mike as uh, as having uh, presenting a finite game, vision, and mission. So it has its benefits. It can be focused. It can be sure. And, uh, and then there's Dominic's. Uh, it's more flowing. <laughs> and it's... And it's... Uh, what could you say it's more flexible because there is no no set uh, rules maybe he he's entertaining idea but he's he's um, he has the intent of not being attached to any ideas. So he is beliefless to a point. 
or or he had, he is able to uh, come up with with explanations, mm, conceptualizations, and maybe he he may sometimes be rigid towards it. But I think he he uh, inserts the the clause that this is just him talking out loud, and he doesn't care if it's right or wrong. If you if you like it or don't like it, if if you can uh, believe it or not. He's just uh, sharing, and and then uh, take it or leave it. And then when when someone tries to say, yeah, but um, this point is not right, or the way they uh, someone. Uh, tries to uh, point something out that's not quite right, then he might see it as a threat or might see it as starting an argument, trying to say, oh, you are wrong and I am right and I'm going to correct you. So then he uh, he tends to shut down and say, well, I don't want to hear it. I'm just sharing out loud and I, I don't want to be corrected. Well, maybe not. It He doesn't go as far as that, but, but it, it seemed like at certain points he was going in that direction. And even saying that uh, he he is being he felt insulted by by the attempt to uh, to analyze his view. What do you think? We'll we'll find out as we uh, as we uh, look look this over this episode over oh, i mean should i should i cut this down anyway i hope this benefits somebody in this world somebody must benefit well i don't know if i should say benefit because maybe somebody might grab a clip of this and sell it and benefit him monetarily. Maybe I don't want that to happen. I don't know. Maybe that'd be okay. Uh, at least it benefited him. I don't know. And if it does, eventually it might benefit me because then someone might say, oh, this person made money off of that person. So I should check out that person and see what they're doing. And so maybe they that will bring somebody to take a look at uh, the YouTube channel, Wake Up and Think Clearly. So that uh, by doing so, uh, they may participate in this conversation and maybe I will learn to think clearly. I still don't know what that means. What does it mean to think clearly? 